Is this the bad lip reading challenge? <laughs> yes. I'm, I, I feel like my lips are very easy to read. All right. Can you hear us stream? Can y'all hear How us now? Do? Can you yep. hear me? They can hear us now. Excellent. All right. Yes. Hey, everyone. Uh, welcome. <laughs> we're we're going to be doing an episode of uh, Dom and Dragons tonight for you. Um, and we're all super excited and really happy about that. Um, and uh, we, we uh, f you know, uh, felt a little weird jumping straight into a bunch of good time laughs um, with with really cute characters and <laughs> really fun times uh, without addressing just a couple um, things that are kind of going on right now. Um, uh, one of which uh being the uh the idea of of somehow being under attack in this country that black lives matter um i i don't know why that is such a uh controversial idea i guess but um but hey black lives matter and and i hope everyone's uh staying safe out there but also being informed as best we can with all the things going on um, to that end, we've put together a few resources uh, if you want to check out um, to to sort of just learn a little bit more about what's going on, but also learn how to help. Um, because uh, along with a lot of the the sort of uh, volatility of, of just uh, you know everyone's world right now uh, is is this sometimes this paralyzing kind of I don't know what to do about it. I don't know how to help. Um, so I think yeah, go ahead, do uh, do we have a crawl now or do we want to mention a couple things right now um yeah the crawl is already up above going on? those are going through oh, cool. um it's up at the top screen right under helpful goat gaming presents dom dragons you can't click on that but it's a sort of collection of resources that we'd found or had been linked to that have educational resources donation resources guides of what to do next um there are also the donate command in chat and the blm command in chat both of which link to various resources <laughs> of course right outside the window and yeah uh various resources that we've uh been collecting the last few days um we're also we're also collecting uh some uh dungeons and dragons podcasts that um that are uh people of color and uh uh people who identify as queer um and we're going to be kind of putting that out on our discord as well as probably tweeting that out as well once we uh we just sort of i i just sort of thought of this tonight and so i kind of want to go through a few of those to make sure <laughs> you know just that so we're not promoting randomness um but we'll we'll be compiling a list pretty soon of that um and and tweeting that out into the world as well um pretty soon um but yeah uh exclamation point donate and exclamation point blm in the chat uh, and that can get you hooked up with um, some some resources, just some ways to help. Because, um, yeah, I, I know that uh, a lot of people just want to do something and and sometimes don't exactly know how or what to do. These are great ways to learn about that uh, and listen. Um, yeah, uh, a, a little bit of a trigger warning then, too. Uh, we had no idea the way the world was going when I made up a world where there are a bunch of Nazi <laughs> bad guys running around uh, talking about races that that are somehow inferior. Um, so trigger warning, if uh, I, I with the Dungeons and Dragons game, we don't ever know where this is exactly going to go. Please, please understand all of us on here are very cool and we're all understanding the Nazis in this game are bad guys. There might be games out there who want to throw nuance in that. That's not our game. Uh, if this is triggering to you, please know that we we get that they're bad dudes <laughs> and, that, and that McKeck poisoned them last round. So, so there won't be much ambiguity here um, <laughs> on our on our end. Uh, and uh, just just that the topic is out there in the world of the of the D and D that we're playing. Um, so I did kind of want to address it in case you're just like. In case you're just like too saturated with stuff right now, I totally understand. I totally get that. Um, maybe you can come back to this at a later point. No big deal. We won't, you know, no worries at all. You you do what's good for you mentally here. Um, but, uh, and then to that end, um, yeah, we're not planning anything incredibly heavy necessarily. So uh, it should be a fun night of 
figuring out what to do next and shopping, which is always goofy and weird and uh, <laughs> and maybe some Nazi murder. Who knows what's going on? Um, go home, Ian's. I think we yeah, can all generally agree that the Nazis were bad, right? I mean, as a sweeping generalization. I think we can go out on a limb there. I yeah, mean, it's, there, it's... there's probably a few Nazis out there that were, you know, good good to their mothers or, or you know, nice to their kids <laughs> at Christmas time. But it, does, it doesn't matter. You're a Nazi, you know. So it's like, yeah, if you're, uh, if you're racist, you're but, you, but you pay your taxes, you're still a racist, you know. So, <laughs> so yeah. true. It's true. Um, yeah, so uh, if if that sounds in line with what you guys are thinking of tonight, uh, stick with us. Um, we'll you know make you smile. Um, we're not we're not trying to get everyone an escape from stuff right now. We are literally just having fun with our friends right now, and we want to offer you some a chance to have some fun with us. Um, you know, uh, hopefully our our goal here is to recharge our batteries. So that we can then go out and do stuff that that matters and and have our minds right and figure out what to do with our world, and we also just need time sometimes to to have fun with your friends. Um, and D and D is a fucking fantastic way to do that. Uh, so, you know, uh, if we can model a little bit of that for you guys, great. I'm awesome. I'm happy with that. Uh, anything? Anything I'm missing? Anything else? Uh, any other announcements? Real quick. Before we jump in, I think so. I think we're good. All right. Well, uh, let's begin tonight's episode of Dom and Dragons. Dom. <laughs> Dragon. Dumb, dumb, dumb dragons. And, um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, that's funny. All right. Well, welcome back to Burden. A muddy spot under the boot of the Galhonian army. Hey, if you have a sword, you best know when to draw it. If you have money, you've already left. And if there's anyone you trust in this forgotten place, you hold on to them. We're all just trying to make it here, and maybe we ain't looking too close about what you got to do to be good in a place like Burden. So, folks, last time on Dom and Dragons, Elif and Connie helped Rose recover a few barrels of Alchemist's fire, very explosive fuel that was stashed away for an emergency. A floating mountain being that such an emergency. Underneath the town of Burden, uh, it appears the Goholians were trying to erect a monument to the god Borir. And that statue came to life and attacked Elif and Kani, injuring them pretty severely. Meanwhile, Mikek and Kalia returned to the town on a griffin as Kryon stealthily flew up to the mountain itself. He witnessed several gatherings of torches and camps on the upper slopes of the mountain. He also discovered a beautiful waterfall, shimmering in the moonlight, and he found an entrance to a hidden cavern near the waterfall. He was able to maneuver his griffin to land in this opening. He then proceeded on foot uh, further into the cave and turned onto a path where shining light bounced off the minerals lining the walls. After sneaking along silently, Crown came to a larger opening where he witnessed two giants, seemingly performing a, a ritual of sorts, surrounding a large glowing crystal. After leaving and gliding down with his griffin, Cryon was able to also make out a large dark shape, gliding in the heavy cloud surrounding the mountain. 
this caused his griffin to dive in fear and retreat quickly into the town of Burden. And just as uh, everyone was about to turn in for the night, Cryon had relayed his findings, and a, a group of soldiers, Gaholnian soldiers, walked up to the group looking for the Gaholnian garrison stationed there. McKeck persuaded them to drink some tea. Now recording. And Craig is now so recording sorry. again. I didn't even think about how that would have. You can uh, go back a bit. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm sure <straight>. fine. <laughs> uh, to drink some of the tea that he had made, uh, rolling a crit 20 to do that. Um, and now, as each of you <laughs> have seen the last soldier drop unconscious to the ground from said tea, what is it you'd all like to do? Connie's still just lying on the ground. Yeah, wasn't Connie already like, fuck this, I'm going to sleep, basically? He had his hat, like, he had his hat over his, on his face like like a cowboy. <laughs> and uh, of course. He's he's still recovering from the their basement adventure. Yeah. Uh, actually, Connie, you're, yeah, you, like, whatever's going on with them, people passing out, whatever, you have the hat on your head, you're sleeping, you just need, like, one more cigarette before you go to sleep. And you get a cigarette in your mouth and you're patting yourself for your, your, uh, tinderbox to light it. Uh, and you pull it out and you hear, like, a chink, 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 chink. Uh, during the fight, it seems the tinderbox was broken. And you don't have a way to light your cigarette anymore. Wait, but does it? Guess who does? Nice, very nice. But <laughs> so, does it still work um, as a communication device with my my colleague who I sent with Grom? Uh, you could try it. Yeah, you can try. Basically, what you did was you sort of took some ash and you would scribble on the inside of it. Uh, and then the ash would reform into a reply from that person. Um, so if you want, you can compose a quick message to send to try it out if you'd like. I will I'll write... Uh, what was the, the name of that person that went with Grom? Do you remember? Uh... Yeah, no, <laughs> neither. They know. were a random person, not in my notes. Um, dear Ooh. friend, do we still trust in Grom? Signed, sincerely yours, Connie B. Demure. Um. All right. And but but you're saying it won't make a light. It won't, yeah. Its main function as a tinderbox won't you know work. Who the, can you can't quite fire. get a spark anymore from it. <laughs> if you just ask her. Connie. Ella is desperate. She's desperate. Connie All of her fingers are on fire right now. She's like pointing them towards Connie her. frustratedly kind of like sits up. He really just wants to relax right now with a cigarette. He looks around. He sees Ella. F with, are her fingers really on fire? Sure, yeah, why the fuck not? Let's go with it. <laughs> he frowns. He looks over at Mikek. Mikek looks busy with some guards. Mikek is just kicking guards. Yeah. <laughs> he looks at Cryon. Cryon looks busy maybe flirting with some locals. He's doing that. He was just before that jumping from collapsed guards backs to other collapsed guards backs. <laughs> the, the guards that have fallen down after drinking that tea he's like doing a little hop skip and a jump like... over them but i love it and thinking of frisking them just so you know but we'll we'll wait for that time so yeah so uh connie will sigh and kind of give a a little nod to Ella, like inviting her to come over and light his his cigarette. Oh, oh, oh! Do you need some fire, Big Bad Man? Is that what you need right now? You need some fire? Ah, uh, 
regret to say that, yes, I am in need of some fire right now, and that your particular set of skills could benefit me, Elif. Could you light my cigarette with maybe only 20 words or fewer of commentary about said act? Yes, <laughs> that much um but like we're friends right we're like friends now this i'm means pretty we're sure you just went past really 20 really you gotta count <laughs> i can't count a talk at the same time how, how are you supposed to count a talk at the same time could anybody do that i definitely cannot count a talk at the same time with that whole like happy birthday thing with COVID 19 i can't do that please, i just talk or, or count. i can't do either both please at the same time. just anyway, light, we're buddies now right please right? We're buddies? just light my cigarette friend but we're buddies right what what did you ask me a question in any of that? <laughs> yeah, I saw a bus there, right? What? <laughs> I cannot understand you. I swear, Elif, over the course of our adventures, you've only gotten less comprehensible to me. Yeah, it's probably like all the drugs or something from a keck, but we're buddies now, right? Hey, be cool. Yes, we are. Okay, I'm gonna hold you to that. I'm definitely like holding you to that. Here you go. And I light the cigarette, but I maybe have a little too much oomph in my produced flame, so it burns through like half of it. Ah, oh, ah, ah. Ah, thank you, friend. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah, because we're friends. Andy, d so d <laughs> what? What information does Connie have about? the bounty on Elif. He, he doesn't know who put, put this bounty out on her or who might yeah. be paying him. Yes, you do know that. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you'd want to say that in front or I don't know how much info you want to sort of spill out. Do you mean in front of Lena? No. Because you're just asking. In front of Lena. Lena. Yeah, because Elif can't hear this, so this is Lena you're hiding. I, I'll, I'll check in with you about it later, Andy. I just fuck you both. No, thanks yeah, for the cigarette. You... <laughs> yeah, thanks for the light. <laughs> but you do know, yeah, there was a specific person at contact that had you, um, that had the hit out, not the hit, the. I was like, whoa, bounty on whoa, it. whoa, those are different things. <laughs> and it is a person here in Burden, or no? Yes. Interesting. Yeah, I'm. I guess. I guess I'll say that Connie is. I guess interested in seeing maybe what happens with the mountain first. I guess maybe he's at least smart enough to know that that's more important right now. Okay. And the light helps. Yeah. So. Thank you, Elif. I'm going to try to get some shut-eye right now for at least eight hours. <laughs> Is that how long? It has to be for a long rest? Six, technically. Sleep for six. Watch for two. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, would we all benefit from a long rest right now? Are we Are we all in need of it? Oh, You're definitely God, all in need of yes. it, yeah. Yeah, certainly. So, uh, yeah, so, and if you want, you can go f um, find, I think most of you have a place in town that you can go to and return for sleep. Um, if you want to stay together as a group, uh, you'll need to figure out somewhere to be. Um, yeah, I don't have a the... Already slept at my place at least once. Oh, that's right. true. Um, before we leave this scene, um, since he's such a tea leaf, I would, I would like Cryon to maybe frisk the guards to see if they have anything of any interest. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah, give me an investigation roll. Okay. Some of uh, Rosie's boys are are picking them up to take them to the to the prison area. That's a crit. Ooh. Wow, that is a twenty-two, a crit twenty, already. Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, yeah, most of them uh, just have some normal short swords, uh, crossbows, if you need any crossbow bolts or anything. Um, you find also Cryon, um, 
and however much you want to share with the group is up to you, but you also find uh, 20 gold on them uh, and about uh, 15 pieces of silver. Okay, so he's a thief, but he's an honest thief. He's established himself as an honest thief. So I'm going to give five pieces of gold to each of my party. I'm going to I'm going to pocket the silver for myself, but everyone gets five pieces of gold. Thank you. You're totally welcome, you guys. You're totally welcome. Uh, so cool. you said like uh, Rosie's Rosie's sort of gang is taking them away. Yeah, yeah. They'll put them in the prison. They say they won't wake up till morning. <laughs> you don't. You know for sure what they, what happened to them don't, with the tea. Yeah. Don't put them they in won't the even nice cell. Oh, I told them to put them in with can of worms. They'll wake up to a, a wolf sniffing them if if that's what they want to do. McKeck is going to. Cell just like opens it. Just like opens it. He just like walks out whenever he wants to walk out. So I'm not sure that's a secure option. But Kek's gonna smile and like walk over to them and rub their calves with like a piece of dried meat. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but again, like his cell just opens. It doesn't really lock. <laughs> it's hard to run when you're missing a calf. <laughs> <laughs> Fuckers. And Cryon, uh, you also find a small key um on uh hidden in one of the boots of uh the main the main captain. Um, you're not sure of his rank exactly, but the main captain who was talking uh, and looking for for the, small, the garrison. Small, like, here. give me an idea. Do you mean like locket small, or do you mean like jewelry box small, or Alice? Right, Wonderland right, like door small. Right, like uh, like a kind of a, a large jewelry box kind of thing. Small. Thank you. And we don't see anything on them that that key could accompany. No, uh, you do. You do also see the manifest. Uh, they were here to pick up um, some ale, uh, some rations, and four giant elk. I like the fact that it's a grocery list plus giant elk that are just labeled as giant elk. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, should we go? Should we go get some shot out, you guys? Oh, it looks like Lena's ready. Lena's ready. Elif can go for days. Elif can go. That's ready. Seven two hours just speaking. Yeah. Um. Yeah. What do we think? Is there anything else you guys need to do? Sleep. Sleep. Then kill sleep. those assholes in the morning. Andy, does does yeah. Connie happen to have back in his bugbear bachelor pad? Any kind of bounty hunter um, tool or object or magic item like that could function as a tracker? Um, um yes, I would say you do. It, it's a it's uh you have a pair of um you have a pair of birds that always know where the other one is. Birds? Uh, yeah, yep. Two, uh, two fairly grimy looking pigeon y, like mini pigeons, basically. Mini pigeons. Are they yeah. alive? Pigeons? Are these living pigeons? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just malnourished, yeah. apparently. No, you've been feeding them. It's, uh, <laughs> you've been gone a day. <laughs> they're basically miniature. <laughs> Why are they, they are miniature? Because they're. In this magical world, there's Why many pigeons. Why are they grimy? Why are they grimy? Oh, because they haven't been washed or... Yeah, they prefer they in, to be dirty. In Connie's inside pocket. Yeah. But they're back at your bachelor pad. Oh, <laughs> guys. All this... All this action in town here in Burden. So loud. All the jumping around on... I don't think we're the greatest in it. What? <laughs> I didn't get that one either. I know, it's like really great, isn't it? Well, yeah, it's great, but we could all use some rest, especially you and me, Elif, after that ridiculous encounter we had down in the basement. And I don't want to put out our friend Mikak here again by going to stay at his, uh, at his shop. So I say I, you're all welcome to come with me to my bugbear bachelor pad. 
on the other end of town. Could all get some rest there. I know that's where I'm heading. So, and I'll lumber to my feet. Can you lumber to one's feet? Uh, Connie does that. Sure. Okay. You let me see where you live? Because we're like friends? Yeah, every, all of you guys are my friends. We're Bob. We're base of burden. Nobody can yeah. stop us. Not some goddamn rugged damn mountain either. But first, we got to get some rest. So anyone's welcome to follow me to my bug pad. Here I go. I'm walking now with my big, long, okay. bugbear stride. Step, step, step. I don't know why I insist yeah. on doing <laughs> foley work for walking. Who would like to accompany Connie? I think McKeck's going to his place. I'm like with Kali. I'm like a half block from my house. Yeah. McKeck's a, you're also all welcome to stay here again. I'm just Elif is gonna need go to with, sleep. Need to sleep. Elif is going to go with Connie because she's really excited that he thinks that they're friends now and she wants to hang out with him. Okay. Um, and Cryon. Cryon says... Uh, thanks, thanks, McKinnick. Thanks for the offer. And and just grabs uh, Elif by the arm as she walks past and says, Elif, do you, do you want to, do you want some space with, with Connie? Do you want to? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think like as many friends as possible is great. Like we just have oh, like, a friend. It's a friend, friend thing. Out. Just a friend thing. Just checking. Yeah. Just checking. Just checking. I was feeling, I was feeling some vibes there. I was feeling some vibes. Okay. In that case, Connie, I'd love to uh, come check out your place. Do you have beer? Yeah, I got bug beer. <laughs> Jesus. What Adam uh, Crown, give me what a bug beer is. Bug beer <laughs> is a, a special type of beer uh distilled. So far so good. <laughs> brewed. <laughs> brewed, Just thank brewed. you. Brewed in burden. Um there, it, it does have a special ingredient in addition to the regular things you might find in beer. Um, there's a special ingredient, it is bugs. Uh, <laughs> it's a very literal drink, it has nothing yeah, to do with really. bug bears, it's but, just a bug beer. But here's what's yeah. really special about bug beer is that after it's brewed, it is distilled. So. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> which means it's water at the I mean, whatever. <laughs> that's fine. Um, that, that, but, that's just a refinement of alcohol at that point. Yeah, that's just yeah, like that ethanol. ethanol. <laughs> uh, Cryon, real quick, give me a uh, insight uh, roll. I've always wondered that about. I think it's either sherry or port, which is a, it's basically a distilled wine, but wine is already distilled, so it's like a it's like a double concentrated wine, which is what makes it so like sickly and sweet and uh, it's always been something really confusing to me okay wh uh wh what do you want me to do insight roll it's a skill you know it hang on hang on, hang on. i'm navigating what interfeeds insight all right a 14 yeah 14. so Crown, as you uh as you leave Maquette and go off with um the others, uh you look back really quick to Kalia and she just kind of maybe looks slightly disappointed and continues on with Maquette. Disappointed in my direction. <laughs> There's a little Maybe. <laughs> Alright, I'll keep that in mind. With a 14, that's all you know, yeah. But McKeck didn't right. see a thing, right? He didn't see a thing. No. Nah. Right. All right. Um, so, uh, McKeck, you and Kalia get back to your place. Um, you slump down on the ground. Just a, a large clump of earth just falls off of you and <laughs> just onto the floor from your shell. And she's trying to clean up as best she can as well. And, and, uh, you uh, have a night, just a tiny bit of a nightcap um, with uh, what your grandma uh, used to call fairy water. Um, and it's just kind of a, a, a sort of a tumble down moonshine, essentially. But it does calm you down just a little bit and it's nice and you start a fire a little bit. And actually, you kind of feel like home again, um, even even if it's. There's a big shadow looming off in the distance as you look out in the window and you can still see a mountain not too far off. Um, 
But is there anything you'd like to t speak with Kalia about real quick, or? Sort of like, how did they find you, Callie? Oh, well, I was... You know how I like to talk to animals? <laughs> Little mm -hmm. ones, squirrels, and bunnies, and some of the mud ferrets in south of town. Well, I was um, speaking to them, and there was a nice little semicircle of several different birds and, and rabbits around me, and uh, they saw that I could talk to them, and that seemed to, to be enough. Um, I think they were going to imprison me at first, but when I saw one of the giant elk, and it just just looks so sad i i let them know what i could do and i let them know i could i could calm it down and why well, they seemed impressed and just kept me there and so i just took care of them as best i could i they let me out to get food every once in a while and i was able to scroll a quick little message on your bedpost and good and i'm happy you got that it. yeah but that's it's about all i could i could do I'm happy you found me then. I don't know what we would have done if, if they came for the giant elk. I wasn't about to give him up. <laughs> Did you learn anything from either the people or the elk? Well, the elk kept telling a fairy tale of theirs. A very old one. But it was, it was from somewhere far away, and it was about a mountain that could disappear. And I didn't exactly know what that meant. And I don't know if it's even connected with this. It just was funny. And then the guards were just terrible, awful people that I had to put up with. There was one girl dressed in robes. She seemed kind of nice, but... It also seemed like she was very fake at the same time. It was hard to hard to say. I forget her name, Nina or something. I killed her for kicking you. Yeah. That's what that's what I heard. That did hurt a lot. Uh, we should probably get some rest. Her thing. Um tell me, Kelly, if if the elk were to no longer be tied that mountain what do you think they would do well uh, I think elk would probably start their own their own little pack so what's what's a herd it's a murder, it's so murder. A group of elk yeah murder of elk <laughs> Well, it's, it's uh, funny you should... A gang. Uh, a gang. It's actually a gang of elk. Is it a gang? That's Interesting. Cool. It's, funny it you should, it's funny you should say murder of elk, because more what I was going for was the <laughs> near term. Would they, for example, cave in the skulls of the various racist assholes around them, and then flee, leaving the mountain unpropelled? Would they just stand there and wonder what the hell was going on? It's hard to say with the ones that have been captured. I don't know what their mental state is. I'm not sure what they would do, but you know, most animals are avoiding danger at all costs, so as long as they can do that, they'll probably do that. Do you think it would be possible for you to speak to the elk that are still here in town and get them to in some way persuade the others to, again, do the murdering of the Goholnians. Sure, I can talk to him tomorrow. Sure, I'll I'll try to find him again. I We released them to the north end. That sounds so good. as long as they're still in the area, I'll, I'll talk to him, sure. Get some rest, sis. I'll try, yeah. to, be up, I'll try to be upwind when you speak to elk, because they, they have quite bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> and McKeck's just going to sort of go in to his room, get onto his bed, lay down, and then pull all of his limbs in. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Beautiful. All right. Uh, Cryon, Elif, um, and Connie, uh, you're walking across town. 
Uh, by the time you get to the 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 square in the middle of town, you see uh, a few people have started to gather um, outside this very large building over here, which is the mayor's house. Uh, and he is he's rushing out of his house uh, in in. Um, <laughs> This is weird for a tabaxi who's who's a cat person, but he's wearing a bunch of furs, uh, like long evening robe furs, and he's he's rushed out of his place, um, and he has a, a small white flag in his hand, uh, and he's kind of like looking around, and he pushes past the small crowd gathered there, and he sees the three of you, and he says, he says, oh yes, yes, um, <clears throat> where might the Bagahonians be? Who, I heard there was more to come into town, and I wanted to make sure I surrendered to them in person. <laughs> uh, that's so like weird. Like you mean by surrender, you mean like fight, fight in person? Because it's really hard to fight virtually. So I understand like why you'd need to fight in person because it's really hard to oh, fight. Oh God, no! Far away. I mean, no you can surrender. shoot people. I can shoot people from really far away. Actually, I can shoot a really, really good and really, really okay. hard from really far away. And when I gain one more level, I'm going to heal the fireball from 120 feet, which is going to be sure. awesome. I can show you pretty soon. I can show you that fireball. But I'm sure you meant fight. No, I meant surrender. I have a little white flag I made. Oh. What's this mayor's name again? It was some you. Bramble Pelt. Yeah, Bramble Pelt. Uh, Bramble Pelt, you son of a bitch. The mm. Gahonians aren't ain't nowhere to be seen. All right, I think they've given up on Burden as a as a strategic point of interest in this here war. Oh, so the town is officially ours again. Ain't no one to surrender to. So you oh. can take that flag and shove it where the sun don't shine, which is anywhere around here, because it is burden. But what I mean is up your ass. <laughs> <laughs> That's perfect. Uh, oh, well, if you see them, let them know that I'm ready to surrender at a moment's notice. Okay. Good night. And he'll step okay. back into his, his mansion. That guy's the opposite. Fireball? Should I show you guys? Should I show, should you get fireball in his house? Just like not right now. Although I could, I could do it right now, but not with fireball. Do I can start fire? Do you want me to start his fi light his house on fire? Well, let's maybe get some rest first. I don't need rest. I can go for days. I can go for days. Seriously, like I have like full HP again, and I have all my slots, spell slots back because we should rested. So I can just go forever, forever. I can go forever. All right. Well. I mean, anything that hurts Bramble Pelt ain't the worst idea in my book. That guy's the opposite of a profile in courage. But, uh, <laughs> let, 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 let's let's sleep on it, Ella. Let's sleep. Okay, let's and then in the, the morning. Yeah, maybe, maybe in the morning, yeah. And then I think Cryon kind of labors the point, and as we walk off again, he grabs grabs Ella's arm again. He says, "Are you sure? Are you sure, are you, sure you guys don't?" Do it? <laughs> Are you, sure, are you sure I should be blowing the house up right now? I mean, I no, can't. No, 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 not the house. Forget the house. I should blow the house up. But I, I'm not cramping your style, right? You don't, you, you don't want to. Can't it? You. I'm not into. I'm not into men, especially big, 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 big bad men who have tried to like kidnap Sorry, me a lot. I'm, totally I'm not into that type of men, but mostly any men. So it's okay. Totally misunderstood, elephant. I just, I never want to get in the middle of things. My bad. My bad. All good. All good. No, you're good. Do you want to go light the house on fire? No, no. Let's talk about it tomorrow. Let's talk about it. Tomorrow. Okay. 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 Come on. Come on. Down. Um. This you turn down an off street where it's even more muddy somehow. Um, and up here is the BBP. BBBP. Um, the bugbear. <laughs> that was a perfect cutout. <laughs> that was the best place for it to get the bugbear. <laughs> the bugbear. Uh... Um, Andy, but as you turn, Andy, you are uh, brutally cutting out. <laughs> no, how's this? Can you hear me? It's okay. So far. Uh, it seems to be a little <laughs> better, Andy. Yeah. A little I better. It may be okay now. It was a bit oh of wow, a lag, you've got a ton of lag again. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can like shut my audacity. What's uh, your um, what's your to, but... CPU usage at? Mine's spiking to pretty much one hundred percent whenever I'm doing anything on the internet. But if I'm not, it can handle this. 
I don't know. Do you know how to check that, Andy? In your task manager? Yep. Let me look real quick. Hang on, everyone. I can't hear you, I don't know if anyone else. I can't. Bob's worst enemy, technology. Here. Thank you, Jay Step. Absolutely. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, it's so much so that if I open task manager, <laughs> everything else it stops. Because it's, it's spiking. It's a full hundred percent. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I so uh, audacity is taking up a spiking your CPU giant anytime chunk. you're doing anything on roll twenty. It's spiking mine, but it's worse for the DM. Um, yeah. So what I do you might think? I might just have you close audacity. Personally, we can rely on your Craig recording. I think. Okay. I, if he's at a hundred percent CPU usage, and assuming you closed any like unnecessary things i think that's the first thing that has to give because otherwise we lose his video entirely or he can't dm the game <laughs> so yep let me uh let me just save what i've done so far with audacity thank you All right, and I might suggest a, a, a drinking game for anybody who's drinking while tuned in tonight. Every time you see me futz with my hair, you take a drink. <laughs> <laughs> now, why, why is that, Adam? Tell us all. Why are you fussing, buddy? I am I'm, I'm historically very self-conscious about my hair, but especially the longer it gets, I... Uh, yeah. And like, yeah, I don't think it's vanity, but I guess self-consciousness is itself a form of vanity. And no, I know. Knows. I'm, I'm really saying I'm getting mine cut tomorrow, but I, I thought you had very debonair tonight when you showed debonair. Yeah. Debonair, I you like it. Debonair hair. So I can make a I can make a Moobot command so that people can keep track of it. If you no, thank you. <laughs> we can stick that's with, hilarious. Stick with fur bag, everyone. Thank you. Okay. All right. So okay. I sound okay. I look okay. Say, yeah. And the last yeah. thing we heard you say, Andy, was um, the bug bear. It the bug bear. It froze up the bug bear. Okay. Maybe. Okay. Just can we let's get a fresh start of you describing us leaving the mayor and going to where we're going, like with cool with the muddiness and all that. Fun stuff. Yeah. Gotcha. All right. So uh, you turn um, down one of the major roads here. Um, it's it's evening, so most everyone is is already in their in their towns, of uh, their their houses, um, taking off the lanterns. <clears throat> As it is a fairly clear night, still you can see still fires on the mountain up in the sky, a ways away. As you're uh, heading in this direction, and then you you turn yet again on an even muddier street. Somehow, a small alley that goes back to a a small hovel in the middle of of larger buildings uh, and that's where the BBB P is uh, the bugbear bachelor pad <laughs> um, and as you turn onto this street then uh, cry on Elif and and Connie uh, you see an old woman uh, and and she looked to be kind of leaning over it speaking to a cat uh, and she kind of like looks up at you and says, "Oh, I'm so sorry. Excuse me. Excuse me. Ah, 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 ah. And she's doing this and trying to squeeze by you in the alley. Do I know this lady? Uh, no. You've not seen her around. Do I think. know this lady? I know like most people in town. I feel like you do know this lady. I'm gonna whisper who this is to you." Okay. Secrets. 
Now who has secrets, Adam? <laughs> well, technically, it's mostly still Andy because Adam was genuinely asking a question. Of Andy yeah, but he's before. gonna keep a secret from me. So it's like Fair. it's like a pre-secret. Pre-crit. Okay. Uh, she's tiefling, uh, which means she's. Um, part part devil, part demon. She has uh, kind of long blue horns um, that just kind of slick back over her head, and um, she has a. Uh, she's not wearing very nice stuff. Um, she's pretty ratty clothing. She does have a hood that she kind of pulls back, and you see her white hair um, amidst the blue horns, and uh, she just kind of nods at you as she's trying to squeeze by. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> Do I have a pretty cordial relationship with her? Yeah, and she kind of like winks at you as she's moving past you. Hey, if you're talking to the cat, that's so awesome. I really like cats. Cats are really cool. Where'd the cat go? She looks back down the alley. There's nothing there. She goes, what cat? I'm pretty sure that the DM said you were talking to a cat, and he didn't say you were talking to a cat when we first came up. I couldn't hear the DM, so I don't know. <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's what he said. And that, that I think there was a cat. I'm gonna go find the cat. I'm gonna go find the cat, Connie, okay? I'll be back, but I'm gonna find the cat. Okay. Caliph is looking to find the cat. Uh yeah. And she kind of she trips just a little bit on on you and you catch her actually with your reflexes, Cryon, and just kind of stabilize her. Oh, excuse me. So sorry. And she she continues on past you. Is it weird to Connie to see this like a random old lady on this particular in this alley? Yeah, very few people live down here. Sure. Yeah. So can can I don't know, can I can Connie kind of get a sense of like is this lady up to no good? Like why is she uh sure you can give me a insight roll if you'd like. Thirteen. Yeah, uh, honestly, she just kind of feels like an old lady to you that that's a little unste unsteady. Uh, and you, you've you heard probably now, she it's starting to put together, you've, you've maybe heard of uh, a very old tiefling in town, but that was even a few years ago, and that was like, she was like 85 at the time. So she's got to be at least 90 now, if this is the same person. Huh. Ah, gotta love Burton, weirdest town in Wigmoles. Was that directed at me? Do I look weary, Sonny? Not weary, weird. You look weird, and it's weird, weird. that you're here, lady. Ah. <laughs> yeah, yes, okay. Uh, and she kind of then bows to the rest of you, and then she says, come here, kitty, and then walks away. Where's the kitty? Where's the kitty? I don't... Are, do you want to do a perception check to try to look? Yes. Okay. I rolled a nine. This is going to be another one of those nights. Yeah, it's uh, it's it's real dark down this alley. There are no lanterns. This is basically a forgotten part of town. Yes, um, which means you need to roll with disadvantage. I forgot. Sorry. Andy, that's not what that means. And it is what that means. Yeah. <laughs> it's very what? dark. Yep. Disadvantage, please. Means. Perception checks, even, yeah, with disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, okay, Nate. Yeah, even worse. Making um, things up. So, <laughs> so you are looking down this this street. Uh, you don't see anything. You see a couple piles of mud that may have once been cats, but definitely nothing. <laughs> nothing now. Don't say no have once been cats, Andy. What the fuck? You go over and it's just like it's just mud. You poke it a little bit, make sure. Uh, but it's very dark, yeah. And, and so you're coming up Connie, on... Connie, 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 Where's the cat? Where's the cat, Connie? Is there a cat that hangs around here? Where's the cat? I didn't see a cat, Connie, right? Connie, 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 where's the cat? No one else saw a cat, yeah. I think... Is there a cat I mean, you did, everyone did at first think they saw her talking to a cat. And then now no one sees a cat. Oh, then I do want to do a perception check. <laughs> okay, yeah. 18. Beautiful, yeah. 
It's very dark. Uh, so go ahead and roll. Do it disadvantage. Oh. Oh. So an 18. Yeah, with an 18, uh, you don't see anything on the ground. You see like a something flying up above kind of some of the roofs, like a very, like a, a fairly large bat or a decent sized bird. Huh. And then it dips, uh, uh, you know, into the night on the other side of the, the buildings. Interesting. Uh, so what, what I was going to say was that actually Connie is taking this opportunity while Lena's like, what? Sorry. While Ella <laughs> is looking for the cat and everything, Connie would kind of say to, are we kind of near maybe, we're getting near my place? Yeah. Mm -hmm. BBBP? Yep. We'll be like, yeah, I don't know about no cat. Uh, I don't think it was a cat, whatever it was. But uh, hey, wait here one second. I'm just gonna go in here. Uh, just, just wait out here for like, just like thirty seconds, all right? Please. Okay, I'll keep looking for the cat. I'll keep looking for the cat. Cat, cat, cat. Yeah, you keep looking for the cat, not a cat. If it was a cat, it was a weird ass cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, and Connie's gonna go inside and basically just try to like clean up a bit. Yeah. <laughs> Um, because it's a total bachelor mess in there. Okay. Um, so he's gonna try to like just get some clothes, hide them in like a like a closet or a corner or something, dirty clothes, uh get like push like with his feet like bug beer bottles somewhere like under under something, um yeah. under the dirty clothes. Um just trying to make it a little bit presentable, yeah. Nice, yeah. Yeah, you have maybe two hundred square foot here it's super small 10 by 20 foot space here um and your bed takes up most of that it seems um yeah Kron, you step in uh and you just you see connie scrambling around trying to clean stuff up and trying to trying to make space for everyone um Kron's like what is that poop is that poop is that a pile of poop there what is that is that chocolate mousse what is that <laughs> it's not poop because I don't yeah. think it's poop. Let me look. No, that's not poop. <laughs> oh, that's weird. Is it just a pile of dirt? Okay, none of my business. I'm sorry. I shouldn't pry. Look, it's uh, a muddy town, crying. It's a no, muddy no, I town. Hate it. I hate it. Hey, uh, you were uh, you were recommending a beer not too long ago. Any chance one of those guys is? I sure you? was. Let me go peek in here in uh, this uh, chilled box that I have. Uh, it's just a box that's dug into the ground so it's slightly cooler than the air around it. Yeah. It's kind of like hidden. Like I kind of have tried to disguise it with like a board. Um, but on the board, it just in in paint, it's just scrawled, keep out. <laughs> so not a great hiding place. But yeah, he'll grab one. He'll grab a bug beer. He'll grab three. Uh, one for you. And if Elif comes in, he'll, he'll toss one yeah, to her. Yeah, Elif will come in dejectedly, unable to find the cat. Um, there's also... Um, uh, Connie would be looking for... There was a, like, um, like a kind of a floor mat kind of bedroll thing that... that... whenever he and Vern were fighting, Connie would sleep on this, like floor mat uh but he hasn't he hasn't used it so he's looking for that to try to pull out for somebody to sleep on crown give me a perception check real quick me. um as everyone's looking around this place too probably the nicest thing in this entire place is a is a fairly large bird cage uh in the back corner um with with uh kind of roosts for uh three different birds and there are two birds in here 16 a 16 cool uh as you're sort of like taking off your cloak like you're starting to stretch out a little bit looking for a place to kind of uh uh like take a load off um you kind of pat yourself down you, you don't have your coin purse on you anymore oh, your gold and silver is missing you guys the old woman in the in the alleyway, she stole my money. 
Check, I'm check, not, check yourself. She's not a notorious thief. She's a notorious check thief. Yourself in money. Check, 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 your, check your pockets. Check your pockets, guys. Uh, uh, you that's your burden money? for your most criminal town in wig moles. <laughs> you got, do, you, do you guys have your money? Um, do I have my money? Yeah, do we still have our money? Yeah. It's just, I mean, it's just something that happens. It's how things go here. She's a notorious thief, you know. She brushes past, she takes your money, runs away, says something to a cat that apparently never existed. I don't know. A weird cat, according to Connie. I don't know what's going on with that, but I'm going to go see these birds now. And Elif is going to walk over and start making chirping noises at Connie's birds. Is that it? She only took my money. She took she took my cash, my, my gold and silver, nothing else. Yeah, just the gold and silver. Yep, you you check everything else. You just look for the ocarina first, and everything is there. You check for that little key in your pocket, in your breast pocket. That's still there. It's uh, just right. Cran take, takes a massive gulp of beer, which encompasses almost half the bottle, and does a massive belch at the end of it, and goes, "Well, sell a V." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, burden. Connie, burden. burden. Burden stays in burden, bitches. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, on his way over to join Elif at the birdcage, Connie will kind of yeah. uh, put his, his hand on Crian's head, I guess, um, and kind of pat him. And, eh, don't worry, Crian. In the morning, I'll help you find that old lady and kill her or some shit. Thanks, man. <laughs> chink, chink, bottle, chink, chink, chink. Cheers. Cheers, buddy. Ah, you lo- looks like you found Bert and Ernie over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited to see your birds, but also you can't just go around killing old ladies like Connie. That's not okay. You can't just go around murdering old people. She Even if stole they're- my cat. Oh my god, so much. Is that like a crime that mur- murdered... That it calls for being killed? It definitely isn't. So just like chill out and you can, if you really want your money back, we can find her and get it back because she's like a chill old thief. Hey, she's totally fine. I was just kidding around. Don't you worry. I'm not going to kill an old lady unless yeah. Cryon wants me to. And I don't think he's going to want me to. And so, Elif, I think if you went up to her and explained what happened, she'd probably be cool enough with you that she would probably return it. Yeah, Bert and Ernie over here. I've had these two for so long. <laughs> probably. Yeah. I, I probably had them. I probably have had them for more than 10 years. Perhaps. There used to be three. There used to be three, huh? W- uh, what what happened to the third one? <laughs> no, no, no idea. Connie doesn't know? Nope. <laughs> but it's That's just the these, first. but it's just these two that have the kind of magical effect or whatever. Oh, no. Or, yeah, they had, all, all three of them had it. Oh, the three of them are kind of connected like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Bert and Ernie, huh? So, um, it looks like Ernie's a little smaller than Bert. So would you say that Bert is Big Bird? <laughs> Big bird. Well, that's kind of confusing, don't you think, Cryon? <laughs> yeah, I don't think. Wait, there's no, there's no se- there's no Sesame Street in this particular, right? Is there a, is there a street called Sesame Street in Burden? Do it, I... it, not in Burden, no, no, no. no it's in Malmont. <clears throat> hey, how does Elif seem to be getting along with these birds? She's chirping at them. Is, does there seem to be any chemistry here? Uh, give me an animal handling check, real quick. <laughs> Elephant. Let's see. A 20? Ooh. Yeah. Actually, yeah. They seem to, they flock right over to Elif and, you know, yeah, seem to be intrigued with this new person. Oh, there has not been, let's face it, there's not been any visitors here for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> well... Well, I'll be. They take a shine to you like mud takes a lick into my boot. Uh, you know what? I ain't seen Ernie take to somebody like this since Vern left. Yeah, well, the two of you us. Died since Vern died? What? Do you mean died since Vern died? Because I'm pretty sure he's dead, right? Like, I mean, I knew him and I heard about him dying. Is he not yeah, dead? He died. He was killed by the Gonian army, but that oh, was a that. few years after he ousted me as sheriff. And when he oh, ousted right. me as sheriff, ending our relationship, I kept the birds and he didn't get to see them ever again. It was kind of heartbreaking for everybody all around. Yeah, that's, that's like really, really, really sad. I was never going to see him again because he's dead. That's like so sad. Poor Bert. 
Yes. It's really sad. I, and I don't know what happened to the third bird. But Thinking uh, about it now, it was about that time period when the third one was gone. Oh, I wonder if... Oh, God, hurry, damn it. <laughs> Did Vern take the third bird? The third bird's name, by the way, was Grover. And... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, what I'm working up to, you know, is I, I, I'm an old bugbear, and bounty hunting isn't treating me as well as used to and you know frankly I, I I don't I haven't had enough money to Are you saying you retired? You'd retire and take care of the birds? You'd retire and just live at home in your dotage in your old age and just hang out with the birds all the time? That's so cute. That's not, so adorable. No, You'd not. be so cute. You'd be so much adorable little right. bird. Damn it Ella, if I don't do cute things and I don't do adorable things, I'm a serious bugbear character. I am not a source of comic relief here. Ah <laughs> Now, what I was saying was that I cannot afford to take care of two birds anymore. And the the, the sight of Ernie getting along with you reminds me of happier days. Are you going to kill Ernie? Don't kill Ernie. I'm not going to kill Ernie. Oh, God damn it, Elif. You just got Can you just let me? Oh, ha, I wish I died down in that basement. Oh, why are you feeling so suicidal? Do you need help? Do you mean, I can even see a therapist friend of mine. They're kind of sleazy. They live in the slums with me, but they look really good and they help us all because we have a lot of trauma. We face a lot of trauma in our lives and they can help you out. Do you want me to take you? Anyway, I would like to formally offer you Ernie. Here's the thing about these two birds. They, they, they only are happy when it's the three of them together. When they're not all three of them together, they can't stand each other. Bert and Ernie, they're always fighting. So actually, you'd be making them much happier if you took Ernie off my hands. Ernie would be happy with you. Bert would be happy with me. And isn't that all oh, great? <laughs> <laughs> But, like, I mean, I know you said that I'm happy to do when they're together, but, like, I mean, I kind of, like, like, I mean, I grew up with a bunch of street children, right? So, like, I get it. Like, with siblings, you think you hate them when you're with them, but then when you're apart from them, it's, like, really, really sad, and you're really sad, and you miss them alone, and then sometimes they die, it's... and they get killed by nasty, corrupt army people, and it's really, really upsetting and really sad. So, um, maybe I shouldn't separate them, because what if they die? Did, did, did Elf just reveal something about her backstory? Like, siblings? <laughs> I don't know. What did you catch in there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> did siblings you... that were killed or something? <clears throat> That's not quite what she said. I I heard what she said. Mm. Well, like, God, not, said, re said, not said real brothers and sisters, but people that kind of feel like yeah. brothers and sisters because they're yeah. all street urchins together. Oh, okay. And then sometimes they get killed. And she's die. basically Annie. Yeah. That's what she's saying. She's Annie. <laughs> well, yeah. Ella, for this I... Right here. This ain't anything like that. This is very specific. As per the instructions given to me by the wizard that I bought these off of, he said that they're not like weird sibling relationships. They're very specific bird relationships that when the three of them are together, they're happy. But when the three of them are not together, they're sad. But if they're all three separate, they're happy. Does this sound legit to me based on what I know of birds? Uh, Andy, yes, uh, my answer is yes. <laughs> yeah, I think so, yeah. Andy, I should get to roll something. <laughs> so far, what you know. Look, I, you know, I can tell by the look on your face that you don't trust me, but I can, I promise I have details about this story that were not just whispered to me <laughs> in roll 20. <laughs> But this, I, you don't have to reveal whatever. I'm telling you, I once met a wizard. His name was uh, uh, P something, P -p -p Ponty Pool, Pog Billy, Pony Boy. I think so. <laughs> Pony Boy. Oh, oh he was an outsider. Was he an outsider? Yeah, he was an outsider. He was from big city in the sand wastes named Federo. I just remember that. I think his name was Pony Boy, and he had a he had a weird ass monkey with him. I remember that. But uh, yeah, he gave me these three birds. 
And anyway, look at all, oh, look, oh, oh, Aleph, look at little Ernie. Ernie's down here, he's chirping and he's pecking at your little flame fingers. I ain't seen him do anything cute or adorable since I lost my secret homosexual lover, Vern, to the winds of circumstance. <laughs> I don't think this looks dark, it's just something like that, future corrupt. But okay, anyway, um, you know, it's a little, I can have for another time. But like, I just don't know if I can like care for a bird, right? Like, I don't know if I can take care of any other living creature. I mean, look at how much I burn myself. Have you seen the burns on my body and the ashes and the burns in my hair? And she's like generally fire everywhere. And I just like, what if I burn it? What if I hurt it? What if it dies? Elif, Elif, let's, let's be honest here. Look at me. Do I look like a nurturing type? Couldn't he no. live in your hair, Elif? Isn't but remember really the burning, cool. the burning the hair? I burn the hair. I burn the hair sometimes a lot. Like, I burn it a lot. I don't think I should put a bird in my hair. This These birds will survive anything. They survive all types of shit. I think they all might be in, 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 invincible to fly. Fire resistant? <laughs> like a baby griffin or something. Pony boy. I think Pony boy told me these birds are invincible to fire. Um, would, Does this bird continue working after it's dead, Andy? No. God damn it. Well, does Elif have any kind of bag, like a bag? Yeah, the, the birds are incredibly well trained. If you want it to attach to Elif, you can just teach her the command word that it'll always just kind of be around her. But it would, you know, it would hide in your bag or hide in your hair or something like that. It's a very independent bird. It can take care of itself. Ernie, Ernie's like that. So what do you say, Elif? It'll be like, kind of like friendship bracelets, each of us having one of these birds. What do you think? It'd be like friendship bracelets because we're friends? Yeah, because we're friends. We're facing the common enemy of a moving mountain. And, and even when that mountain's gone, it's like, we're still be friends, right? We're like friends for life now, right? That's what friendship bracelets mean? We're friends forever? And, and you won't try to kidnap me anymore? And we'll just be best buddies, right? Well, I, I, don't, I, won't, I don't need to kidnap you anymore because here we are together in a never-ending friendship that will never be compromised by other motives of my own. <laughs> of course, I can't take any more. <laughs> Meta. We can have best buddies now. Yeah, totally. Let's be best buddies. And I can have the bird. I can have Ernie. Ernie's adorable. But if Ernie dies, I'm going to be really, really sad. So Ernie better be actually invincible to fire because I have a lot of fire, like all the time, like tons of fire. There's just fire everywhere. Sometimes I just like I'm half asleep and I just start fires. And it's like really scary. You should see my house. It's burned a lot. Um, Yeah. And that's like, yeah, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. It's like a weird tick of mine almost. Yeah. Um, So if Ernie dies, I'm going to be really upset. So it's not going to die, right? It's invincible to fire. Ernie, Ernie can take care of himself. Trust me. Here, let's just open up this cage. Uh, clink. Okay. And uh, when you do that, Bert uh, immediately flies out, starts to kind of circle your head, Connie, and lands on your shoulder. Um, and Ernie kind of hops out, uh, just stands there and looks at you, Connie, for a second. And do I remember? Do I? Is there a specific code word that I have to say? There is. Yeah. I say it. Uh, give me a history check. <laughs> oh fuck! <laughs> you haven't had oh, to bird these birds for a while. Also, I just, I, 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 McKeck is totally not here, and so cannot interject this. However, Elif's bag is an explosive satchel. Yeah. <laughs> also true. All right, twelve history. Twelve history. Uh, yeah, you think you you think you remember? It's it's um uh, vigmoles with a V. All right, here we go. <clears throat> the S is a dollar sign, but uh -huh. it just sounds like an S. Okay. Um, all right, here we go. Abracadabra, jigamarole. What's the word, pony boy? You told me years ago. The word is Vigmos on Elif. All right, and then at that, Ernie uh starts to kind of flop around and it flies and, and just immediately disappears into your hair, <laughs> Elif. And you can you can kind of feel it rustling around. A little bit. Ernie, I'm not sure that's safe. You should maybe get out of my hair. I mean, it's probably okay as long as like, I throw stuff fires like, right in my hair, but a lot of the time my hair is on fire. Like, it happens really often, so Ernie, maybe you should get out of my hair. It flies out, then it comes under your shoulder and just starts yeah, kind of laying it. there, nuzzles its its head beneath a, a wing and mm -hmm. just kind of. Friendship sits. birds now. Friendship birds are friends. We're friends and we have friendship birds, and it's wonderful. It's so wonderful. I'm so glad we became friends. I didn't mean to 
call you Big Bad, Big Bad Man all the time. You were just always trying to kidnap me and hurt me, and it was really not okay. And I was just trying to, you know, fight the power, fuck the power up, burn the power down, burn the town down sometimes, but not like in a, because I'm not upset with the town, just in a way to, you know, kill the authorities, because the authority in this town is really corrupt, and it's always been really corrupt. So I'm just trying to change it. You understand that, though, right? Because you're on my side, and we're buddies now. We're so, we're friends, finally, friends. During all of one of those days, <laughs> yeah. So during I, uh, during just... during all of that, Connie has grabbed two more beer, three more beers, has given one to Cryon, and downs two of them while Elif is talking. Nice. Yep, Cryon. Yeah, you take another one, and the rest of you then, even Elif, you're getting really tired from the day, the last two days of of non sleep and fighting and and saving people. You all just kind of go silent, let the night just kind of slip away from you. Uh, and each of you is able to find a, a somewhat comfortable place in this tiny room to uh, to sleep. Um, unless anyone's going to stay up and try to keep watch at, at any point. Um, you probably all just pass out. How secure is the house? How secure? Mm. Uh, uh, it's got it's got a little uh, like one of those little hook latches on the door. It's got one of those hook latches. That's not great. Yeah, I mean, we could take turns keeping watch. Uh, something about the current events with the Cahonian soldiers and elks and moving mountains got me on edge. So maybe we could take turns keeping watch. I'll keep watch first. Okay. Then I'll wake okay. up my okay. best buddy, Elif. Okay, okay. Good night, you guys. Good night. Thanks for the beer. Good night. You guys enjoy the bed. I'll sleep down here on this mat on the floor. All right. Okay. Good night. So the night progresses uh, entirely without without any any rousings. Uh, if you keep watch, you you just kind of get bored looking out the one window onto a very dark, muddy street. Nothing there. Um, Elif is just definitely on her watch, mostly playing with Ernie, cool. and is pretty distracted. Yeah. Then all of you wake up in the morning, entirely. Uh, rested from a long rest, which means you're able to, all of your hit points go back up to normal, you get uh, half your level in hit dice if you've used any of those, um, all your spells, all your key points, everything is back up all the way. Nice. Nice. And, uh, why don't we go ahead and take a break there uh, before we jump into some more planning and what to, what's to be done next. I love it. Uh, so, hanging in there, everyone. Um, we're going to come back and find out what happens to Ernie and find out what's going on with Kalia and Cryon and find out uh, what McKeck's going to do to the Nazis. It's going to be a lot of fun. <laughs> so, Not for uh, the Nazis. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, um, everyone, uh, take care of your fluids, get a drink or something, and uh, we'll be right back. Okay, BRB. <laughs> be right back, everybody.
everyone welcome back we're uh yeah we're we're in the thick of it uh so the group um just had a very nice evening together uh very few fighting not a lot of demons which is always good um so yeah so the everyone was able to wake up uh refresh the next day you had met um you had made uh, the one-eyed beast of bird in the tavern in town the uh the place to meet uh, up again the next day uh so mckeck you get there first um and it's not too long before kind of elif and connie and cryon make their way in uh as well the it has started to kind of um drizzle uh this morning um the streets are exactly as muddy as burden is normal for you also don't see the mountain at all it is entirely overcast um while um and, and the the rain is making it hard to even see maybe where the elk would be below it um so waking up this morning there's this weird feeling you all of a sudden don't have this very scary thing inside of you anymore but now it's just kind of looming just outside the periphery you also have a feeling of uh oh shit the the Goholian guard that came here was probably due back last night at some point uh and they definitely haven't checked in um so as the rain kind of drizzles on you as you're making your way to the tavern this morning um, and you're wiping the sleep out of your eyes and it's it was a very hard night's sleep for all of you you also uh, have woken up a bit anxious can we find that old lady because Connie meant it not about killing her but no, yeah. like we're gonna we're gonna get that uh, that your coin purse back for you buddy it's as you step important. into the tavern uh, sitting in the back um, with a, a large bag on on the table and just kind of sitting there um, eating some eggs very 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 slowly uh, you see the uh, the old woman Connie uh, we'll see. and McKeck you also see McKeck here McKeck's here I, so yeah I mean the old lady's there I don't know if Connie will defer to cry on about how we don't want to handle this well, I feel like Kron wants to go over and say, You want those eggs scrambled? Bash! <laughs> <laughs> Are I they already scrambled, did. Andy? How, no, how they're she poached, having... but yeah, poached. no, please don't scramble. Can I buy you uh can I buy you breakfast? I just recently what, came with my, with with money. my money? Where's my money? Take my money yesterday. Part of it's right here. Mmm. You you did take my money. You're admitting to it. <laughs> of course she did. She's a thief. Also, she's like she's like ninety. <laughs> she's like ninety years old. You're menacing like a ninety year old woman. Maybe she shouldn't menace old people. Like she's she's, she's she's just doing her job. Her job is safe, so she's she's killing. This is a lesson, little one, about perceptions. Even old people can be dicks. <laughs> Do you need it for anything in particular, or are you just using it? To breakfast stuff. I mean, it's a good meal. It's more fun than anything. <laughs> Look, I don't mind buying you breakfast, okay? But I'd like the rest of my money back. Come on, is that fair? I'll buy you breakfast, you give me back my money. How about you try to win it from me, little one? Or are you too scared? What are we talking about here? Oh, we're talking about halflings and giants. Halflings she and puts a she has a, a cup, and then she puts it on the table. And uh, in the cup are a few assorted dice uh, that look to be carved, carved from bones. McKeck is going to sort of adjust his flower crown. Given the circumstances, this feels a bit on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so anyone uh, who wants to play halflings and giants with this old woman, you will find in your hide handouts uh, your the hideouts. rules for halflings and giants well let's have a little look here so halflings and giants is a game uh basically the rules are the dealer rolls a d10 or the giant setting up the target number or the knee uh and if a dealer rolls a one the knee the giant kicks the house wins no matter what and the player rolls 2d6 or the halflings trying to match or exceed the number rolled by the d10 
Um, wow. Uh, on double ones, uh, a snake scares the giant away and all the bets are off. Uh, if the player rolls an 11 uh, to 12 or the maw or the, the mouth of the giant, the halflings are eaten and the house wins. Uh, and the players who hit the knee exactly may split the dice by doubling their bet. Uh, the player may split a second time if they wish to become legendary, and then their payouts are listed below. So, do you want to try this? So she, uh, yeah, so she puts a couple of the uh, uh, six-sided dice toward you, Cryon, if you want to go first. Yeah, I'll go first. So I go over to, there's a little dice section here. Oh, I see it. So yeah. Do I, do I go down to the D six and then go over to the two and hit that? Is that right? You will. Yeah. 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 Oops. So first is roll. the eight. So this is the knee. So this is what you need to roll to to hit the knee or higher, but you can't roll an eleven or twelve. <laughs> so how much would you like to bet right now? How much? How much gold do I have? Then? You don't have any. <laughs> you will have to ask your friends if if they have something for you. Oh, Connie will Connie will get front to you. Uh, uh, All right. Well, let's let's start off a little. So if you beat this, uh, it'll be a three to one payout. Okay. How let's much see. gold did he have that she took? Yeah, I, I had quite a bit, I think. Yeah, you have. I, I kept it in here just in case you. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so you had like 20 some gold, 48 silver. Yeah. I'll front you the five gold that you, that you gave me off of the. Okay, cool. I'll take that five. Box. Thank you. And I'll, uh, my, my initial bet will be two gold pieces. So... All right. So you're trying to hit an eight or better with two D two D six, but I can't uh, roll. Not. A... An, an 11, 11 or 12. 12. You're yep, trying to roll an 8, a 9, or a 10. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. You have three target so, values. Yeah, that's not So fair. bet as much as you'd like, uh, or we can uh, roll again. I'll roll. I'll bet two gold pieces, and then... Two uh, gold? So, okay. So I go over to the to the D6, and then over to the 2, and then I... Yes, exactly. Yep. Come on. A 7. Oh. Ooh, a 7 is not quite enough. She'll... Just reach her old clawed hand over and take those two gold pieces from you. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, was that it? Do I only get one go? Oh, please, more if you want. Yeah. <laughs> right, I'll go again. I'm gonna bet. I'm gonna bet one gold piece. Well, you can you can see her roll first. Oh yeah. Okay. Which is another. It's eight. the same thing yeah. again. Yep. Right. I'm gonna bet one gold piece this time. Okay. <sighs> oh no oh no another seven so she'll just take that one gold piece put it on over here she now has three gold of yours <laughs> all right i'm gonna go i'm gonna go one more i'm gonna spend the last two dollars two gold pieces well um, yeah you don't have to yeah here's here's the number okay. four okay so this will pay out one to one if you win no that's not great um all right, I'll I'll do the remaining two gold pieces. Okay. An eight. An eight. Easy peasy. She gives you uh, two gold. So, so you are up to four gold now. Pieces now. Yep, you're up to four now. Want to go again, little one? You know, I'm gonna let my friends have a go. Oh, who's next? My luck changes. Who's so next? Pro. Listen, oh. if you have other stuff you'd like to bet, too, it doesn't have to be gold. <laughs> Yami warned me about this. Games like this. Specifically with you playing them, actually. I haven't spent the night with a turtle in a very long time. Just saying. Ah, oh, you like them cloacas, huh? Hey, I don't kink shame. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Who's uh, next? Tavern keeper, can I get some ale with breakfast? Uh, here, I'll, I'll, all right, I'll play some halflings and giants. I'm all right, more giant than you could ever be, old lady. Oh, here. let's go! Let's go, Sam. Crying, give me those three. Wait, because he was—you were left with four. Um, four. Four, four gold. Yes. Yeah. yeah. All right, here I'll, I'll, I'll. Let me see. I'm gonna roll a. Let's roll, old lady. 
All right, here's the roll. A two. So it'll pay one to one if you beat me. Pretty good odds, don't you think? Prime, what should I bet? What should we go? I think we should I bet off all four. I mean, I'm a ga- I'm a gambling man, so I don't know if you'd be taking my advice, but all four. Okay, you're betting four. Go ahead and roll, Sonny. Two d sixes. Yep. Don't roll a snake eyes or an yeah. eleven. Yeah, roll oh, there's 11. the eleven. I'll take that gold because you just got eaten by the giant, Sonny. That's four gold for me. Ha, I'm a bugbear. I don't get eaten no by no giants, and I'm not gonna uh, get eaten by no moving mountain giants either. And I'll have you know that the money you just won in this evil game is Nazi blood money. Enjoy. Ugh, that's gross. Anyone else? Anyone else have anything interesting for for me, Susanna? Or, wait, are you? Who's Susanna? Are you Susanna? I'm Susanna. Oh, okay. Elif, what you say? It's been a long time, dearie. Yeah, sure. I'll try a little. Go for it. How much? Let's see. Here's what I roll. Ooh, six. That'll pay one to one if you can beat it. What's like? What's like the minimum buy-in? What's the minimum buy-in? How much can I bet? How much can I not bet? Uh, I Sorry. have many. Can I, bet? I oh the smallest amount, huh? a silver, I'd say. Okay, you, you can get a, 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 a five silver. Five silver out of this. Five <laughs> silver. Okay, five silver is barely enough to get my whistle wet. <laughs> I meant that sexually. Hey, not the hell? A three. Uh, okay. I'm Different. sorry, those five silver are now mine. <laughs> right. So while while Elif was continuing our heart losing streak, Connie would, would kind of go up to cry on and he'd say, All right, I'm getting tired of this game. How about we try to beat her at her own pickpocketing game? What do you think what do you think about that? I like that. If we work together, maybe we'll get advantage on whatever check we <laughs> do. So, Andy, did Susanna yeah. specify that there were, like, she had other types of things when she was saying that to Elif? Yeah, yeah, there's all kinds of, th- yeah, she's got a bag on the on the table itself that if you have other things you want to bet, she'd be more than willing, it sounds McKeck like. will sigh and sort of walk over. Gammy, give me luck. Um, what other, I'm not as interested in the coin, but what else might you have? Oh, well, let me look in here. Well, I got Kitty, but <laughs> it'd have to be pretty expensive for Kitty. Um, not a cat. Not a cat, no. Um, I have... Oh, I got some some fine herbs that might be used for a, a potion or two. I have um, uh, some old meat that's incredibly stale and moldy. Uh, and I have some, some good meat that's incredibly not moldy. If you like that sort of thing. And, uh, uh, well, uh, two, let's just say toys. Uh, do, do we, do we, do I see Cryon's mm. coin purse anywhere in that, around her? On her? Uh, yeah, give me a perception check. A ten. You're looking. You don't see it. She must have it hidden if she still has it in the purse. Yeah. What's this about herbs? You said. Well, I got some herbs. If you got a little bit of coin to bet. What you thinking? Well, she'll she'll take out and she'll kind of scoop out of the shavings of some herbs out of her bag onto the table, um, and you're looking at it. And actually, it's a few um, really nice kind of medicinal herbs. You could probably make a couple healing potions just with this. Probably a bet of around 20 or so. 20 gold for all of this. McKeck will sort of... Hmm. And let's see, there was the disgusting meat. The not disgusting meat. Yes. The... Or if you do a little dance for me, Tortle. I'll lower it to ten gold. 
Do and I then ah? Kitty do the dance. Do the dance. Yes, yeah, Kitty, but Kitty is <laughs> Kitty's pretty expensive. Do the dance. Emphasize the cloaca. McKeck's gonna <laughs> McKeck's going to um <laughs> place the ring of water breathing on the table. Oh shit. Kitty and the herbs. Oh. Why are we doing this? Kitty and the herbs. Oh, okay. Well, let's see which let's see what you roll before you bet. Hold on. All right. Two. Uh, two. This, yeah. If you you put the win, yeah. Uh, she'd accept that bet if you want to do the one for one. Yep. So now you have to beat it two, but don't roll a one, or don't roll snake eyes, or don't roll eleven or twelve. So, yes. <laughs> I don't know. This is this is just to make this amusing, and I don't. I, I let me know. Let me know what you think about this one. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. actually, I was honestly before I decided I wanted to know what Kitty was. Um, okay. I was thinking about that. Um, could I use either mold yes. earth or earth tremor to try to jostle? You try to jostle the dice. Yeah. Yes. Nice. And, yes. I, and yeah. I do not want to uh, hurt anyone with this. Right, right. Give me an earth tremor to make and the I'll table burn the spell. Jump a yeah. little bit. And I'll yeah. So if you use that spell slot, I'll I'll or I've already there. burned it. So yeah. Then it's it's uh you can re-roll here. Ah, wow, she's playing with me, Kat. You see if you can get a look and see if you can see your uh, your six. Quakers. A six. She goes. I thought that was an eleven. Oh shit! The damn. Your eyes are failing. Are here. Yeah, yeah, so many of them. Fucking earthquakes. Okay, hold on. Fucking ah. earthquakes. Fucking earthquakes. Hold on. She's looking through her bag and she goes, Here are the rest of the herbs. Yeah. Stupid so as, turtles. As she I never did like turtles. As she is as distracted as she yeah. is, can I roll a, a... What is that? Is there a pickpocket check or something? Uh, so Perception, if you want to try to see something. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, you have to see it before you go. and Probably, yeah. So as she's like rummaging through her her pack for Kitty now, whatever that is, a sixteen. Uh, you do see that she has uh your t coin purse now tied kind of on the backside of her, uh, and as she's leaned over now, kind of hunched over the bag, she goes, "Kitty is one of my dearest friends, so be nice to her, yes." Uh, and she scoops out what is clearly a living thing because it starts to kind of move and you hear kind of a ah. and as she sets it on the table you see you see a a tiny miniaturized dragon that unfurls one of its blue wings and stretches it out um, it just kind of looks sapphire like gem like almost and it stretches its head out and sort of and then just kind of like looks at you and she goes well kitty you belong to him now and if you ever leave some gold laying around maybe oh, you'll come back to me one day until then shoo shoo and she kind of pushes it forward a little bit uh, go away if you want. You can now have a tiny miniaturized dragon, uh, which is a pseudo dragon, um, in stats, as as a friend of yours. Hello, buddy. Uh, and you also take back your ring of water breathing and stuff as well. She's just like, bam, stupid tortoise. And she looks at you, Cryon, like just checking her over. She's like, what do you want? C Connie's gonna try to get her attention. To kind of give cry on an in. Yeah. Uh -huh. Connie's gonna kinda sit down across from her and he's gonna do his best to be like really Yeah, get your flirt on. Friendly and <laughs> not okay. flirtatious, but ther okay. therapeutic. Yeah. Listen, Susanna. Seeing yeah. you give away that weird ass cat, i.e. dragon. Yeah. Reminds me of last yeah. night when my unspoken motivations forced yeah. me to give away 
one of my own winged creatures. Oh, yeah? I know how hard it can be to let go of things that you love, but if you love them, set them free, and et cetera, et cetera. While so they can on. heal stuff for you and come back. Yeah, for, yeah right. Well, okay. Yes, right. Sure. Okay. At this point, Cryon's kind of, he kind of fakes like he's got got some some kind of stain on, on the thigh of his trousers. Yeah. Brushing off some some old dirt or something like that. And as he as he does that with his with his right hand, his left hand kind of reaches behind him and is trying to okay. get hold of his coin purse. So yeah, is that a, uh, a dexterity? Check? It will be, yeah. So it'll be a it'll be a sleight of hand trick. Um so real quick, uh yeah. Connie, go ahead and roll either a performance or persuasion, let's say. Well, we've established that Connie always wanted to be a stand-up comedian. So I'm yeah, performance. Okay. Waka waka. Oof. Uh, waka waka. Four. Okay. So that'll help determine then where the DC is set for you, Cryon. Uh, she's just kind of like looking at you, Connie, like. Arr. And then uh, Cryon, give me a sleight of hand check. Oh, this is gonna be good. Uh. I don't, yeah. Oh, so it's a 12. Yeah, it's not the 17. Uh, because you don't have advantage. So the 12. Oh, you get something taken away. Yeah, so a 12, then she, she sort of, um, uh, she kind of like looks over real quick and just as your hand is reaching, she just smacks it. Like, no, 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 you got to win that, Sonny. Or, uh, invite me back to your place. Well, he doesn't have a place. You can use my apartment if you want. No, 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 no. I saw a play like that once, starring a, 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 an elf named Jack Lemon. Uh, <laughs> it's called the apartment. That's all. <laughs> but it's my, yeah. Crown's like, but it's my money. It's not your. It is How your you money. Know? Yes, it, it is. Uh, no, no. No, Qua squabble you've here. Bought, you've already bought eggs with my money. You've already taken some of my yeah. other money. Yes. Playing, playing me and dragons. I can't get uh, me and giants, I should say. You can't get um yeah. my coin purse back. It's mine. Like It's true. It's a bit mean. Oh, it is a bit mean, isn't it? Uh, uh, listen, you got anything to trade for it? <sighs> Let me have a look. What, 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 I just would need something for for old Susanna Duststone. Well, this don't seem right at all. Well, what do, so Shut up, is, you. Is, is it in my character sheet, any stuff that I have? Sure, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you'll have a... On your main page there, uh, kind of down toward the bottom, you have uh, inventory or equipment. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a backpack, your symbol of your monastery, bedroll, mess kit, tinderbox. Fair. Oh, you do have the trap. Yeah, that might. Or the key. That might come in handy. What is this? Oh, I have. Do, do I have forty-eight gold pieces? And, and no, that's oh, that's what she took thing. from you. Yeah. Oh man, uh, is this what Vern was talking about when he said the things never felt quite right in this town? All the crime, all the all the all the bullshit. Is that? Is this? What is justice? What does it mean to? <laughs> Uh, have another drink, Connie. Have another drink. <laughs> we'll have, we'll have another drink. But like, he's. I would like to suggest that Connie is like. Now you look here, Susanna. I was sheriff for this here town for ten years. While at the time I let this type of bullshit happen underneath my very bugbear nose, and while I mean, I'm advocated for this bullshit, you did this bullshit, right? You're like you're a part of this bullshit. I was just getting to that, and while I made myself <laughs> of him complicit in said actions and behavior, I am beginning to feel the beginnings of what I might call a character arc, with respect to my understanding of justice, Susanna. I command you, as yes. the only remaining vestige of justice in this here town, to give back what is rightfully Cryon's. It's the right thing to do, and God, and Hrogek help us. Burden might yet live to be a right place to live. 
And that's good. Give advice. me a persuasion check Susan. or performance. Either one. 13? 13. You see her go. Okay, you. For what this town should be one day, I'll give you one more chance. One more halflings and giants. Who's the roller? You don't have to put anything up. I'll give you back the little one's stuff if you win. And I'll also give you this. She reaches behind and she pulls uh, what you literally thought was just a broom, a nasty broom leaning against the, the side of the wall. She puts that then on the on the table as well. What is that? What is that? Flying broom? <laughs> I don't know. It's a broom. Maybe it's special, maybe it's not. What do you say? <sighs> Who's gonna roll? It's come yeah, from who is Maybe not the turtle. He was the hot one. No, cry, cry on. It was you, and then me, and then Elif, and then me kick. Right. And is this something that guidance would work for? It's not, I mean... Yeah, actually, I'll yeah. let you, if you use guidance, I would let you re-roll one of the dice. I have some dice okay. thing as well, but it might not be as strong as Elif's. I have... I, yeah. I should have said this, I forgot. I have something... Oh, hang on, let me see, I'm reading it. When you roll a one, oh, it's on a D20. It says when you roll a one for a D20, right. you can re-roll, but it's only on a D20. It, yeah. All right. Yeah. Yeah. If, if Elif casts, or someone, I don't know who has guidance, but if you wanted to cast that on Cryon, um, I'd let him re-roll one. If, if cool. That works. So I'm going to cast that on you, Dom, and then really you are able to re-roll one if you need to. Okay, let's let's dance, you old crone. Um, do I? Is it just? Oh, it's you first, yeah. So close. You first, Wait. Maybe? So close. That's all the road. All right. Can you beat a six? So I need to roll either a seven, an eight, a nine, or a or six. Uh, yeah, six, seven, or, eight, nine, or, or ten. Or six does it. Yeah. And a six is actually ideal, isn't it? Oh, oh God. A five, Stay you can re you can re-roll the one. So you have a four and a one. So I just so go you can, D6, one? Yeah, just one D6. So we'll add four to whatever this is now. Here we go. Here we... It'd be the two. A five! That's a ten! Yes! No, no, it was two, it was two D, eleven or a... It was two D6. Oh, he sorry. rolled two oh. D6 again. So he rolled exactly oh. six. Okay, so a four and a two, you rolled six. That is enough. <sighs> she goes, ah, shit, and yeah. she tosses yeah, the I dice across. I was sweating. I was in Vegas or something. She takes a, the bag, puts it on the table. I don't want to see any of you again. Although, would you mind buying me a pint before you go? I'll buy you a drink. I knew I liked you. <laughs> that was kind of fun. But you just... now have you now have the rest of your gold and silver, plus a broom and a broom and a baby dragon. We've done all right. All right. Night goes, <laughs> Susanna. I'm I'll just, buy you a drink. I'm just What's feeding. Nah. I'm just feeding kitty tidbits. Which, which, which is which is tit? I'm assuming, right? Yep. <laughs> yeah. All right. A pint of witch's tit. I'm as well. Appreciate it. Appreciate that's, an old, that's an old. That's an old beer from witch's tit. Just like. <laughs> uh, so serenade the bartender will come over. Uh, with the witch's tit, put oh, it on. This the... isn't the lady that. No, that's the lady that I met the very first day at the bar, yeah. and then I went back. This was the lady flirting, but not really. Yeah, yeah, this was the bartender that maybe told Nene that you were here. Uh, you did kind of get that that very first day you were in town, but she, you know, she's just working, trying to make some money. So nothing evil. You didn't think in, in it. Um, but she brings over that. Uh, she's a, 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 a lizard folk um, person as well, and puts it down. Uh, anything else that y'all be needing? Can I get you anything? I know it's early in the morning, but bar's open for anyone. I don't judge. <laughs> I think I'm good, you guys. I mean, oh, I'm, all right. I'm probably just feeding friends. bits of my breakfast to Kitty at this point. How about I bring over a couple pieces of bacon for the beasts of burden? Appreciated. I got you. 
and she'll end back. So the, the old lady then gathers up the, the rest of what's left of her stuff, pounds the beer immediately, slams the drink on the table. Well, I'll be seeing you. I and thought you just said you never wanted to see any of us again. <laughs> that was before you took all my shit. No, and it wasn't. It, it was right her. now. I forget stuff. And then she'll start <laughs> walk out of the out of the tavern. I, I could offer you a tumble down's memory supplement. Oh, you're going to hope so. should introduce the dragon to the bird and see how do you think they be friends how can we know on this has the dragon been primarily eating like the meat off of mckeck's plate <laughs> or the yeah. like vegetables slash eggs <laughs> the meat yeah as, as the bacon going... is brought over the dragon steals one and goes over to the corner of the table and <laughs> i'll sort of pet the dragon that's a good boy. I don't think I would recommend introducing him to your bird, but it's a very nice bird, uh, and I'm glad that it's a friendship bird. I'm Incidentally, I'm also looking at it, trying to judge if this is one of the, I would assume in McKeck's knowledge, very rare subclasses of bird that are immune to fire. And explosions. Uh, yeah, give me a nature check. <laughs> <laughs> Seven? Yeah, you definitely don't think this would be a bird <laughs> who's a unifier. I'm just gonna uh... While it may be immune, I might recommend not actively exposing what was his name? Ernie, his name's Ernie, his name's Ernie. I would not I, expect. I, the other one was Bert, but they hate each other. They hate each other a lot for some reason. I don't know, there's this whole thing like like there are three of them and the one of them went away, so then they all hated then they hit each other when the third one was gone, and he said it wasn't like my 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 um my siblings growing up, it was different than that. It was different, it was more like a like a like a magic hatred, like they have to magically hate each other or something. I don't know, I just don't get it. I wouldn't recommend exposing Ernie to fire on too regular of a basis. Also, as much as I'm sure he's very self-capable, you might feed him occasionally. Oh. <laughs> it would make him happier to know that you wanted to feed him. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just not sure. Like, 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 have you seen my hair and my ash and my face and my burns? And they're like, like, have you seen my apartment? You haven't seen my apartment, but it's really burned. A lot of things are burned. I burn things a lot. Sometimes I just, like, halfway up and start fires. I just kind of start fires. Just like all the time. Sometimes it's not intentional. Sometimes it is. A lot of the time it is. A lot of the time it's intentional. But kind of <laughs> um, so, like, I don't know. I don't know if I can like, keep the bird from burning. Elif. So sometimes when you're half asleep, you start fires, and you didn't think to mention this before you slept at my home and place of employ? No. Why, why would I have? I, I burn my home all the time. <laughs> Crown, you're it's counting fine. like your money just to make sure the old lady didn't go off with any. Uh, and as you have the gold and silver kind of on the table and stuff, the dragon kind of wanders over, like hops over, steals one of the pieces of silver and sort of hops back. And then it like curls its like wings around the silver and it's just kind of looking at everyone. That's adorable. You're a good boy, kitty. <laughs> Crown, Crown probably does a little once over of the broom we got the broom well right yeah yeah uh if you want to check if see if it's magical an arcana check would do that could i also I... be ritually casting detect magic sure yeah yeah by the way andy connie has yeah. burnt on him like under his hat okay cool yeah, yeah. 14 interesting Good. crayon yeah you you think this is magical, but you cannot exactly tell what, yeah. like what the magic is. Is, the, is. is it a very normal looking symbol it is. on it or a magical part of it? Or? Right. It's got a few, um, what looks to be to you, magic runes on kind of the handle, um, which leads you to believe this actually might be a magical broom of some sort. Um, Let me know in 10 minutes. 
Right. So, so what is a what does your ritual look like for sort of detect magic? Um, I feel like most of Mikhek's ritual casts involve taking something, even if it doesn't have a material component, out of his flower crown, and then doing something with it. So in this case, he's like he's taken a long strand of a grass out and he's yeah. sort of plating it over and over, like plaiting it and like weaving it. And he's just sort of doing that and then undoing it and then weaving it and then unweaving it. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So uh, after about 10 minutes, uh, crowns counted his money. Uh, you know, uh, Connie's double checked under his hat to make sure that bird is still there. Um, you took a few seeds from from uh, McKeck's ritual, and you started to feed uh, Ernie their elf. Um, and uh, Kitty is just asleep on the table itself. Um, this kind of sapphire jeweled dragon, tiny, tiny thing. Um, and yeah, after about uh, after about ten minutes, McKeck, you open up your eyes. You look at the 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 object in front of you it's glowing absolutely you can tell um give me an arcana check because you think you know what this is but you just kind of want to m- make sure in your head get a little help elif okay totally 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 and i'll kind of slap him and give him guidance nice all right oh. Nineteen. All right, with a 19, uh, you're pretty sure then. You know what this is. This is a this is a broom of flying. Um, it mm. will, if someone sits on it or stands on it, uh, it will be able to levitate them um, up to a speed of 30 feet. So it's it's not incredibly fast, but it is it does fly. But will it go to any height? Uh, yeah, you believe so. There is no, no one is, you know, no one's done a lot of experiments about how high actually it can go, um, because you start losing oxygen and it gets very cold at some point. But the broom, technically, goes as high as you want it. Yeah, this is what McKeck would probably say. So, to you. A, a, as McKeck is uh, like shoveling more food in, and you said that Kitty grabbed like a silver coin. Yeah, I'm gonna sort of take like a spare or like a coin purse and put most of the coin in my actual bag but then like build basically a small nest of like copper and silver Here yeah it, it, it yeah it immediately hops over uh oh and then starts to gather up the coins underneath its wings and it then looks around very cautiously as if hopefully no one saw it do that you're okay buddy um I'm like yeah so that's a flying broom not a super fast flying broom but it flies seems useful yeah, that could come in real handy, guys, especially since we're trying to fly up to the mountain. Maybe. So, now that you've eaten, now that you've drank a little bit, you've calmed down from the night's, uh, you know, the night's long rest, you've woken up with a bit of anxiousness, but seeing your friends here again, um, and dealing with the old lady, you feel a little bit more calm. It's drizzling, it's raining outside, and this is weather you're very used to here. Um, so yeah, what is it uh, you'd like to do? You still need to probably figure out about what to do with the guards um, that came last night uh, that are probably a waking up about now. And you maybe then need a plan of what to do next. And, uh, maybe uh, spending some cash, seeing if we can... Uh find anything worthwhile in in burden gear getting geared up when you say the soldiers do you mean the the soldiers that drank the tea the other night yes right yep if you wanted to question them or anything or if you wanted to uh the again they were probably due back at their to their regiment last night um at some point so that's something probably you'd want to deal with Craig so down. we're having so we're having a meeting um Craig and, is down. and connie's like hey craig are you keeping track of these here what we're talking about in this <laughs> meeting are you keeping track of this or what <laughs> it's a good question craig where, where the fuck are you <laughs> you tried so hard <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my God, 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 God well, uh, where's Craig? <laughs> Serenade, have you seen Craig? No. I can't believe oh, Craig would have the audacity <laughs> to leave in the middle of a meeting and not be recording the minutes of this year meeting. Big decisions are being made. Yay. I bet if Craig persistently fails to appear, it may be an issue with the voice server. Try changing the server region and server settings. Eric, <laughs> timed out. <laughs> Hang on, everyone. We're having a technical difficulty that even the fourth wall can't take. <laughs> even the fourth wall cannot defend against this. But while we figure that out, um, how's how's everyone doing? Ask Andy a question. <laughs> yeah, ask ask me some shirt. I'm gonna bring in Twitch so I can see what you guys are asking and saying. Or if you, I mean, you know, Dom too. If if you're interested in Dom and not me, that's fine. That's fine too. <laughs> Yeah, feed us your questions. Some oh, yeah. weird fucking questions, y'all. Yeah, what do you got? Happy birthday, Rachel. <laughs> it's it's Happy Rachel's birthday. birthday. Not She's... more of a statement than a question, really, but... Happy birthday, Rachel. <laughs> Any questions? See, I'm a Pisces. I don't know if... Uh... Don't know if you knew that. Can Dom say happy birthday to me? I think he just did. He did. It just didn't catch up there yet. <laughs> the stream's on a delay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There we go. <laughs> I read uh, your mind, Rachel. Read your mind. From the future. <laughs> Love it. Recap everything you missed. Uh, we, uh, what are your favorite foods? Thank you. Yeah, recap everything I missed. Just putting a question mark at the end doesn't make that a question. Recap everything I miss? I mean, what are your favorite <laughs> foods is actually. A... Yeah, what are your favorite foods? Yeah, what do you guys like? I like pickles. Once, this is, once like, all this is over with COVID and everything, and you could go to a, a restaurant without feeling guilty or weird at all, and you want to take your friends, where do you take them? What do, what do you have? Mm, I'm a big fan of buffalo. Anything with buffalo sauce. Um, oh, yeah? I like weird stuff. I'm doing an episode tomorrow on, on the show that I do on Instagram about yeah. pickle vinegar. Because I love oh, interesting. pickle vinegar. Uh, anything hot and spicy or like tart like this is a, a basically like a, a big jug of fresh lemon water. I love that stuff. Yeah. Nice. What about you guys? Yeah, Adam, what do you like? What's the question? I was going to say, you're sorry, talking what? to the, the people who are actually like doing oh, tech sorry. repair. Sorry, uh, sorry, I will help leave. entertain the chat while Andy and Galway try to fix things. No, um, I don't need to. We've getting a lot of... Sorry, I meant Adam. I don't know why I'm getting your guys' names mixed up. Like, I've yeah. known you both for like, you know, fucking forever or something now. But anyway, <laughs> um, we've been getting a lot of Japanese takeout, so I don't actually really miss Japanese food. Otherwise, I'd say Japanese food. Yeah. Um, what do I miss? When you say Japanese food, you mean sushi, or is there other Japanese sushi and food? also like actually Japanese food, like um, yeah, like yeah, okonomiyaki. Uh, I miss okonomiyaki, but I can't actually get that in restaurants here. I'm gonna make it for dinner this weekend if it turns out. Amu, good. Amu has amazing in Boulder uh, okonomiyaki. I've never Amu's been to Amu. Really I've uh, never actually. Like, I don't eat in Boulder that often. Yeah, it's, it's you know, like, there's the, like, sushi restaurant that's like, oh, popular Japanese food on this side, and then Amu, which is, like, the obscure country food on the other side. Nice. It's so I'm good. Go there. Yeah. What about you, Andy? Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, you know, it's, man, some good Japanese food would be awesome. Uh, I'm not super picky. Um, What's something we've... I don't know, just, yeah, just going to, like, a deli, getting a sandwich or something. I don't know, I'm so starved for, basically, just human contact of, you know, the, the going out experience again. That Kind of whatever. Uh, what is the definition of love? Oh, yeah, that's man. a good question. That's a good question. I just don't know how to Friend, answer. Friendship without judgment? 
Oh, that's pretty good. That's How actually Ella a DC about fire. <laughs> Unconditional positive regard. Oh, those are all I'm good. I'm stealing that from psychology. Yeah, that's cool. cool. What would you name your pet dragon? That's a good one too. Hmm. Dom is has the closest thing to dragons probably as uh, as any of us. I do. I have a beaded lizard. I'm confused with the bearded lizard. I have a beaded lizard from Guatemala, which is pretty venomous. Some rattlesnakes. Um. Uh, I don't know. I always wanted to have a uh, like a the more the more potentially dangerous the animal got, and I guess the dragon would be kind of at the at the sharp rim of that. I wanted <laughs> yeah. to have. Uh, I wanted to call it Karang. Remember that heavy metal seventies and eighties Karang. Karang. Yeah. I thought Karang is very metal. Nice. Name for a dragon. That might be cool. I like it. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, naming a dragon is. It's it's like naming a kid. You want to make yeah. sure that it's you know it's important decision. Yeah, and they're also um, so noble. Yeah, they're like so they name themselves. Like, I wonder if like if you name it while it's a baby and you know it still needs a lot of dragon care. And can't just, you know, hunt on its own. I, yeah, I don't know. I'd probably name a the... baby dragon, like Gotham. Oh, that's cool. Right? Did you guys read that that series of fantasy? Temeraire? The Temeraire series? No. <laughs> I've heard of it. I haven't read it's great. it. Great. Peter, Peter Jackson bought the rights to, to the books, but, to, but they never made them into films. It's basically the story of the Napoleonic Wars. So, you know, kind of the British Empire versus France for the most part, but with dragons on both sides. So it's kind of semi-historical look at that yeah. time, but each side has dragons. It's very cool. That if sounds like very fantasy, cool. you like fantasy, it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, I love fantasy. Oh, you'd like nice. Temeraire. It's really worth checking out. My ears are sweating. Nice. It's a shame. <laughs> Things. What else we got? Uh, DC or Marvel? Uh, good question as well. Uh, Marvel for me, historically. Mm, I, I just kind of didn't get into DC when I was young, and so I don't quite have that nostalgia surrounding DC. Um, so yeah, I've, I've pretty much stuck with Marvel. Probably Marvel for me, just because when I weigh up my... Are you, con are you contractually obligated to say Marvel? Or... <laughs> yeah, maybe. But if I weigh up my favorite, <laughs> my favorite Marvel character, yeah. my favorite DC character, which is kind of Spider-Man versus Batman, I like both oh. of them. Yeah, yeah. Probably just Spider-Man edges it. I love Batman. Yeah. Apart from Batman, I feel like the rest of the DC characters. There's quite a few good Marvel characters. Yeah. Like Swamp Thing as well. Nice. All right. I'm I'm not sure that Craig is going to be coming back to record any meeting minutes. Um, yeah. No worries. Connie Connie comes running back into One Eyed Beast of Burden. He says, <laughs> "Guys, I think the mountain took Craig. It's more important than ever that we get back on track with this narrative." <laughs> okay. So forget about Craig is what you're saying? Well, we know we got to go rescue Craig from the mountain. Okay. <laughs> I think meta game okay. level. I think we're gonna rely on the stream audio um, from Twitch recording, and hopefully, hopefully our amazing editors can get it cleaned up well enough. I think so. I'm feeling good about it. So that actually means on Twitch, uh, all of you, if we start to sound weird or odd or funky, please let us know, because now that's the only recording we're going to have for the rest of this. Um, but our sound guy, Sam, is diligently there, I'm sure. He means checking all that out. And he means with regard to how the audio quality sounds, not what we're saying. We normally sound weird with what we're saying. True. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like Adam just presented us with. Yeah. All right. Hey. Well, I, hey. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're back then. Uh, so you, uh, yeah, are sitting around the table. You've uh, got a, a tiny pseudo dragon uh, that is starting its own horde uh, with your copper and stuff. Um, and uh, you have a flying broom, it seems. 
you kind of, I think the two main things that you were thinking of are what to do with the guards and then what to do about the mountain. So feel free, discuss. Did I get a response back in the tinder box? You, yeah, you check it again. Yeah, nothing yet. No, that part might be broken. God damn or, it, Andy. Or they're not uh, responding for nefarious reasons. God damn it, Andy. I want to go oh. try out this flying broom, you guys. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. Did do you pull Adam? Do you pull out the tinder box like while you're checking it right in here? Yeah, I pull it out and I'm hitting it and I'm swatting at it with my bugbear paws. Andy, if I look at that with detect magic on, is it still magical? No, it is not. Why are you slapping your tinder box? <laughs> well, part, You've of it, part of it's that it was given to me by someone who was very important to me in my past. Nice. But another part of it is that it's just crooked damn broken. So we're going with sort of a percussive maintenance idea? Yeah, it's either that or blow into it. What should I do? <laughs> it's a box. I Couldn't you just... Can anyone here fix a box? Tinder box. Tinder Serenade box. sort of raises her hand. Serenade. Hi. Not, not just a pretty face, are you? Ha, no. You need something. Yeah, could you try to fix this tinder box? It's magical and it has emotional weight for me. It also. is It is not oh. the first. I don't know about magical part, but uh, I'm sure I got some extra flint here. Uh, I'll see what I can do. She takes it back into the kitchen. Okay. It It's not magic, Connie. It's supposed to be, though. That's the point. I don't think adding some tinder to it is going to make it magical again. Just saying. Maybe if it's magic tinder. <laughs> the burn and I met was through tinder. <laughs> through magic tinder? Yeah. <laughs> I lit up, I lit up, we were both camping on opposite sides of a, a stream, a stream called Titwitch. We called it Twitch. Uh, and I lit up some Tinder, and he lit up some Tinder, and I kind of moved my Tinder to the left, and then he moved his Tinder also to the left. And that's that when can we, only take so much. And that's when we knew there's somebody on the other side of this Twitch stream. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's a fourth wall break with a mixed metaphor. It's... Oh my gosh. It's a beautiful story, though. Thank you. <laughs> Makek is going to sort of nod, scoop up another spoonful of eggs. Okie doke. You... This sounds very stressful. Can I interest you in an herbal soother? Me? Yes. Herbal soother. What is that for constipation? No. All right, I'll take it. Excellent. Positive. Just sort of uh -huh. pushes, pushes, pushes a uh, basically small pack of like lozenges across the uh, table at you. Okay. Enjoy. All right, I'll take one of these here. Unwrap. Is it? Are these wrapped up? Are they wrapped? No, up? they're basically just in a small box. Well, I'll take one of these lozenges out and I'll pop it in my mouth. Pop. What's it taste like? Uh, what does it, it taste like? It's sort of a wild berry flavor, generally. Fair Probably enough. has honey as an emulsifier in it. Okay. Wild bugberry with uh, what is that honey as an emulsifier that I take? <laughs> Guys, um, if we're going to be here for a little bit, I'd like to go and test this broom outside. Just see if see if it takes off. It, you, we're going to be here for a that's bit. A, right? That's a good idea. Also, <laughs> Let's do that. also, Connie shouldn't be on it. He should not operate any machinery for mm, four to six hours. Why do you say that? I'm good at machines. I'm especially good when I feel the way I do now. It's okay. It's okay, buddy. Oh, wait, so wait. Did we just drug Connie for four to six hours when we were going to go storm the mountain today? No, 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 no. Plan? He just shouldn't operate the machinery for four to six hours. He should perk back up and feel better and call it half an hour. 
I can ride a griffin, I can ride a griffin, that's not a machine. Put me on a griffin and I'll soar through the sky, like in my dreams of old, when I was a baby bugbear. Bug baby? Okay. God, that okay. honey is really emulsifying me. <laughs> uh, cry, cry on, you, you take cry on the... Go check out that broom for me. Yeah, cry on, you take on the broom just out, out front here, and it's... Uh, again, cl a really cloudy sky. The rain is picked up just a tiny bit, um, and uh, yeah. Do you do you want to stand on it, sit on it? Uh, you know, I'm going to do the classic. She might ride a, a broom stick and then just kind of try and yeah. do a, a jump of sorts from the ground. Right. I'm not stupid. Not completely insane. What, yeah, no um, worries. What would that? What type of check would that? It... Yeah, uh, just give me a uh, intelligence check, just straight up in general. So just hit the intelligence itself, not a skill. Uh, seven. Yeah, with the seven, it's uh, you. You jump up a little bit, and it it kind of like lifts you up a little, and you're just like, Aah! and you fall over just onto the side, uh, catching yourself in the mud a little bit. It splashes up on you. You're like, oh yeah, I, I feel how this works. It's just, it's going to take some getting used to. So it does, it it does have a little magical lift. To it. Yeah, it definitely did. Yeah. Hey. It, it was right, not. Cool. It's not quite as easy as the Griffin, it seems. Okay, cool. All right, I'll come back in. Yeah. Cryon comes back in, kind of excited. Guys, guys, it That's works. Cool. It did something. I, I, I got some. I got some. What do you guys call it? Uh, talk, talk, torque, torque. What you guys call it? Talk. <laughs> we, we call it talk. When I say that in the States, people are like, like oh, the car's got some really good talk to it. They're like, what do you mean, torque? Torque? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to rephrase it for you guys. You guys the, the broom had, seemed to have a, a certain amount of torque to it, um, yeah. but I couldn't, I couldn't control it. Um, but it definitely seems magical. So that's a score, you guys. That's a score. Uh, Con Connie, how are you feeling? You, you got, your eyes are a bit... Dave. Tor. It's me. <laughs> Connie. Connie. Who's, who's talking to me? How many fingers? How many fingers? Connie. Oh, little halfling fingers. How I many? 25. <laughs> McKay. How long did you say until he. <laughs> About half an hour, depending on size and weight. What is the active ingredient in that? Lynch? Honey. Chamomile. <laughs> Chamomile. Chamomile. I suddenly do feel less stressed about that tinderbox. But still I'm curious about the progress that that NPC is making with it. You, uh, you hear in the kitchen, clang, clang, ching, ching, clang, clang, and then, oh, shit! Ah, oh, that doesn't stress me out at all. Not even the part of me that still feels grief about the loss of my secret homosexual lover. <laughs> you, <I've>... <laughs> the fact that it's secret and you keep saying <laughs> so it's <laughs> so funny. At this point, McKeck is like pulling out a small notebook, and I feel like Cryon and like Elif can easily see him like flip through pages. You see a heading of like tumble downs herbal soothers and then just a list of races so, <laughs> bugbear interesting effect <laughs> appear to succeed vis-a-vis -vis emotions <laughs> other effects patent <laughs> lovely <laughs> you're in the clinical trial for tumble downs <laughs> oh shit um yeah, uh, does anyone else want to try the broom? Um, or or I, I talk be, to the guards? And the DM doesn't care what you do, but... I would be kind of interested to see if McKeck feels like it could support his weight. He's totally cool with, like, Cryon generally using it, but I just yeah. want to see, like, does it feel like it could support me? Yeah, it, it, Cryon, if that's fine. Uh, if you don't mind the, uh, him get, having a go. Totally fine. Yeah, knock yourself yeah. out. Not literally, McKeck. Intelligence, <laughs> you say? Intelligence, please, yeah. I have, I have a suggestion. Also, 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 because he had trouble controlling it. Right, right, right. And you know how, like, car engines work on combustion? So maybe if I light it on fire, it'll make it better, easier to control. Do you want me to light it on fire for you? Should I light it on fire? 18. 
uh, <laughs> see, you see Makek then bounce off the ground and and like catch himself and hover there a second, uh, and then he just kind of starts to slowly turn in a circle with it and just kind of set it back down. Uh, Makek actually, yeah, it, you think you you kind of have this. There there are some tricks to it, and it's certainly a balance issue then, but but you feel you can control it pretty easily. And it doesn't seem like it has any problem with my weight. It didn't seem so. Yeah, you yeah, you were able to go up, down, feel you felt pretty good with it. Yeah, I'll sort of uh, can I like bring bring it back down after I sort of fly around a little bit. Uh, I'll bring it back down and sort of hand it to Cryon and try to give him uh, any information I gleaned. Sure. Yeah. A couple of pointers about like, oh, it, it sort of feels like you're going to lean forward too far, but that's actually about the good point of balance and Cryon, you're like, oh, OK, yeah, that's interesting. Cool. Um, so, yeah, in Cryon, you think like next time you were to try that, you probably have advantage if you wanted to. Some some kicks in sort of uh, pencil. Well, that was fun. Should we go? Yeah, no, should we just go kill those guards now? They seem like bad people. Did we have the questions asked them? I don't know. I think maybe they might know things. But also, um, we need to blow up the mayor's house. We said we'd discuss that today. Well, you weren't there. But we said we'd discuss that today. And we need to blow up the mayor's house, mayor's house because he's a, um, like a bad man. He's just, like going to go surrender. And he really wants to surrender himself to the Goholmians. And it was kind of weird. He was saying it really weirdly. Um, but he had a flag. And he's just a bad man. So, boom. Oh. <laughs> okay. I see no problems with this. He's been generally poor for business. Bramble Pelt's a coward. Nazis are cowards. <laughs> Justice has something more to do with mercy than I ever thought in this bugbear brain of mine. <laughs> Elif, I will follow you wherever you need to go on this journey of yours, because I understand more fully than ever before that our journeys are connected and that hatred and suspicion are no way to spend this one wild and beautiful bugbear life. Emulsify. Emulsify. <laughs> Great, okay. <laughs> oh, I'm man, in, guys, fun. I'm in. I'm I'm fine with this house. Um I might give this broom another go, so maybe I'll fly the broom over a little closer to the mayor's house. Yeah. Yeah, uh yeah, give me a give me another intelligence check, uh, and we'll take advantage on this. So highest of the two rolled. Fourteen. All right. With that, uh, you're able to uh, get a lot more steady with it. Um, obviously, you feel that McKeck's advice helped a little bit, but his weight was distributed entirely differently. Uh, it takes you a while to kind of figure out, but uh, if you don't, yeah, if you start to kind of fly around and head over to the mayor's house, even it's the wind and the rain is kind of hitting you pretty sharply in the face. But other than that, you feel pretty confident about this. Uh, the griffins that were kept over at McKeck's place, um, this might be slightly easier for you than than riding one of those. Um, but you also could ride one of those. You felt confident at, at that too. Um, so yeah, you get you get a little bit of a handle on it. Um, so yeah, whoever wants to keep the flying broom, uh, put that in your inventory. Put it in my inventory. Sure. Uh, so where are we headed right now? If we're you kind of, all of you see Cryon sort of take off around, just kind of going around the town and through the streets a little bit. I'm probably at this point just going to follow Elif because Elif seems like she has a direction that she's going. Uh, and I think that that's in the same direction as like flinging Nazis off of things. Um, <laughs> uh, and I'm probably actually, McKeck has now finished taking notes, he's pretty sure, on Connie. Um, and is just sort of interacting a lot with uh, Kitty. Um, first I, thing, yeah. asking Kitty, uh, do you like the name Kitty? 
Uh, you're ta you're speaking to animals with it. Uh, I, I was or, I would or, flip or just trying to like in your normal voice. Yeah, I would like, flip between either of them. Yeah, yeah. Um, it sort of like kind of cocks its head at you. Doesn't seem to quite understand, and then kind of goes. Ah. 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 Is this a better name for you? <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> I'm going to start concentrating on sp or ritually casting uh, speak with animals as we. Sounds good. Yeah. As you kind of walk, you're just kind of concentrating on that. Uh, then, Elif, I guess, where are you headed? I guess I'm heading to the mayor's house to burn it down because my party is allowing me to do this. <laughs> to lead. So. Yeah. Uh, so you get out into the street um, and. Uh, you hear kind of a crack of, of lightning, uh, the roar of thunder. There's a storm approaching, getting getting a little heavier. And again, you just feel that mountain sort of off in the distance. And you kind of look sort of east, southeast of town-ish. Um, and you you see all of a sudden that there's... It, it actually probably wasn't a crack of thunder thunder that you heard because you now see black smoke coming from just the southern tip of town that disappears very quickly into the clouds but it's definitely started on the ground and then you hear another <laughs> what sounds like thunder but what you see is a flash of red light and another big plume of smoke some other kind of explosion seem to be happening Somewhere near the prison, it looks like. Now yeah. where are you going? It's gonna start <laughs> running over there. Oh, yeah, son of a bitch! Investigate. Sounds good. Yeah, all of you uh, and Crown on your on your broom. Uh, the rest of you are making your way down uh, to where the prison is. I'm gonna go up high. Get a kind of. Yeah, you start to go up high. Yeah, very good. Music's changing, guys. Uh, so you're rushing through the streets. Uh, you get over to the prison. Um, you see one of the walls of the prison and part of the roof gone. Smoke and cinders are all that's sort of left that you see there. <clears throat> you see one Gaholian guard uh, that seems to have been one of the prisoners in there kind of stumble out and then fall straight into the mud, um, lifeless. Uh, you then um, also see coming out of this smoke an armored figure, very large, as it sort of stands up to its full height. It's It's maybe... 15, 20 feet tall, you see six gigantic legs protruding from this armored humanoid figure and a giant tail with a large stinger on the end. This Imagine a centaur, but instead of the cute horse part, there's a scorpion part. And it's very large wearing some red and white uh, of the Goholian uh, uniform. And as it emerges from the smoke and it lets the rain kind of sl slash on, sl slush onto its face, uh, and then it, <laughs> that's a word, and then it sort of looks down at all of you, and you, then you hear a familiar voice. One of the, the deep German accents from the guards from the night before. What are you doing? There is time for blood. And the time is now. And I think that's where we'll end tonight's episode of Dumb and Dragons. Damn. <clears throat> hey. Uh, so scary, dude. That's going to be a scary thing that you'll have to deal with next time on Dumb and Dragon. Love it. I can't you're not, hear you're not, you, Andy. You're not, we can't hear you, Andy. No. Our, our next episode of Diamond Dragons is going to be on the 17th, uh, unless uh, anyone in the 
in, in our party has a problem with that, we'll let you know either way. But uh, plan on the 17th. Um... Please uh, don't forget to check out the uh, exclamation point BLM and exclamation point donate uh, for uh, resources for being able to help um, with, you know, just uh, with uh, a lot of the tension that's going on right now um, with 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 the with the issues of of, of Black Lives Matter. Um, if this is if you're looking for something to do, if you're looking for a way to help, please uh, check those out. Um, and also check out our Discord uh, as well as um, our Twitter because uh, we're going to be putting up some lists of other Dungeons and Dragons uh, groups that that uh, have um, either uh, 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 people of color or or some queer identifying folks. Um, just to kind of uh, spread the love around. Um, there, D and D is such an amazing game, and it's it's you know um, there are so many diverse voices out there that you can listen to play this game um, that we we thoroughly want to suggest uh, listening to them as well. Um, yeah, uh, thanks for listening. Thanks for hanging out with us tonight. Uh, hopefully, we were able to recharge your batteries just a little bit uh, to go out there in, in the rest of the world, and we look really forward to to seeing you next time. Um, thanks for checking us out. We love you all. Stay safe. Hang in there. And from all of us on Dom and Dragons, we wish you an excellent evening. Good night. Good night, everybody. Bye. Bye, friends. Good night.